On day one, I spawned in as a fire witherstorm, a force of pure fiery destruction. Why am I so puny? I only had six hearts to begin with, but I knew witherstorms grew stronger by absorbing blocks and mobs. I tried to absorb some of the nearby blocks and grow bigger, but it didn't work. Maybe I needed to unlock that ability first. It also looked like I couldn't really fly yet. At least I'm immune to fire. The area I spawned into was a molten lava field that would be really dangerous for regular mobs. It was like home sweet home, but there was nothing to destroy. I didn't see any other witherstorms either, so I figured I had been left behind by the others while they went off to grow bigger. Wait for me, guys! I ran around looking for my friends until I saw something really strange. There was a snowy biome right next to this fire one. What's the deal? Everyone knows that fire and ice don't mix. I heard a growl behind me and saw a fire Cerberus looking really hungrily at me. Hey, witherstorms aren't nutritious! I hit the Cerberus, but because I was so small, the damage was nothing. I was losing hearts fast to its bite, so I decided to run away. I ended up running straight into a Vex that wanted a piece of me too. All of a sudden, Fireland doesn't feel that much like home. I jumped down into a lava pit and hid myself away. I knew they couldn't follow me because of my fire immunity, so I stayed there safely until the next day. On day two, I hopped out of the lava pit and found some burnt out trees. It wasn't what I was expecting, but at least I could gather some wood to make my first tools. I've never seen a wither make anything before, but it's nice to be the first at something. These tools would probably burn up if I used them here, so I made my way towards that snowy biome that I saw the other day. On the border between the fire and ice biomes, there was a wide river with a strong current. If I try to cross that, I'll be put out like a campfire. I didn't have enough wood to build a bridge, so I followed the banks of the river to see if there was a place where it was safe to cross. That's when I noticed something small flying towards me from across the river. It was an imp with icy wings. Do not cross this river. I'm warning you, Fireface. That's rude. First of all, my name is Zozo. Second, why do you care if I cross it? It's not me who cares. The Ice Meister is the one who doesn't want anyone from the Firelands coming over here. I'm a Witherstorm first and a Fire Creature second. I'll go where I want. My warning still stands. There's a war going on, and Ice Meister plans on winning it. A war between the creatures of ice and fire? That sounds heated and chilling. Steer clear of it, Fireface. I mean, Zozo. Thanks. I finished the day by mining some stone blocks from the side of the river with my new set of tools. On day three, I started building a base on my side of the river with some stone blocks as the foundation. Whoever this Ice Meister guy is, he can't be mad at me if I don't leave the Firelands. I was still really weak for a fire witherstorm and needed something to protect me from all the wandering mobs until I could unleash my full potential. I was betting that the mobs could sense my true potential and that's why they were attacking me. Almost done putting up the walls, I'll be safe now. It turned out I spoke too soon because a dread beast ran inside the base and started trying to infect me with its plagues. I pulled out my wooden sword and swung away at the mob. The wooden sword caught on fire as soon as I started using it. It felt good to be the one attacking for a change, probably because I hadn't gotten to do any actual destroying yet. With the final blow, the wooden sword got destroyed, but I downed the beast. Bye bye, beastie! Hey, I wonder if I can use my absorb ability on it now. Come on, let's go! Absorb! The ability actually worked this time. The dread beast and a bunch of the surrounding blocks got added into my body. I had gotten way bigger, and my total number of hearts was 14 now. I had three tentacles now instead of none. I could make three times as many melee attacks now. The only downside was that absorbing more material into myself made part of my base disappear. I better be careful what I absorb in the future. I replaced the blocks that got absorbed and made sure to finish the foundation and replaced my broken wooden sword with a new stone one. This one should last longer now. I plan to go and gather more stone tomorrow. On days four to five, I went looking for more stone by the riverside. This time, I noticed that part of the river was frozen solid, like somebody had built a bridge of ice blocks over the running water. If I tried to walk on it, the ice would melt, but something told me the ice and snow mobs wouldn't have the same problem. I was right, there was already a taiga zombie on the fire side of the river. How many times does the Ice Meister need to teach a lesson? Hey, I've stayed on my side, why can't Ice Master stay on his? It seems you don't remember what you used to be. What did I used to be? You were the Ice Meister's greatest rival, the leader of all the fire mobs in this world. You almost melted all of the snow zone before he defeated you. Whoa, I used to be the ruler of the fire side of the river? That's really cool. What happened that made me so small and weak? That's not your business anymore. 
I'll destroy you before you become that powerful ever again. The Taiga zombie clearly wanted a fight, so I made sure to give it one. The zombie had only one weapon, and I had three tentacles and a stone sword, so he was quickly outmatched. I won! Now I'll absorb you, too! The absorption didn't work this time, which probably meant that the ice mobs were totally immune. That was disappointing, but important to know. I finished off the zombie and gathered as much of the stone as I could before my wooden pickaxe broke. I went back to my base with the stone I gathered. If there really is a war, I need to get fortified. On days 6 to 8, I found some lost tentacles lying around in the Firelands. I wonder if these used to be mine when I was big and strong. The mysteries grow deeper. I couldn't attach them back onto myself, but I did know of another way to put them to good use. First, I had to gather sticks from around the burnt trees. Next, I upgraded my wooden tools to stone. This let me mine for a couple ingots of iron and gold beneath the Firelands. With access to both sticks, gold, and iron, I was able to craft a hook. Then, I combined the lost tentacles with my hook in order to make a tentacle grab. This special item would let me grapple enemies and keep them from getting away. It would be perfect for keeping mobs within melee range. Not long after I crafted the tentacle grab, I noticed a few ice mobs on this side of the river. They were ice piglins, and they were not happy to see me. Get out of here! Go tell Ice Meister that I survived, and I'm going to become big and strong again. They started moving towards me. Time to test out my new weapon. I quickly struck down the first mob, and then the second. I then snared the ice piglin with a tentacle grab and pulled him in for a tentacle beatdown. Bet you weren't expecting that. Those old lost tentacles were good for something after all. The piglin was defeated. Ice Meister would have to do better than that if he wanted to eliminate me for good. And next, I was going to strike back. It was time to see what this snowy biome was all about. On days 9 to 10, I gathered as much stone as I could find and built a sturdy bridge over the river. Now I can cross over to Ice Master's side of the river and see what I'm up against. The snowy biome had tons of materials that I had never seen on the fiery side of the river. There were blocks of lapis, and the polar bears dropped some pelts, which I used for decoration on my base. I continued through the tundra, seeing all sorts of wonderful things along the way. This was a nice area. It would be a shame if I had to burn it all down. That's when I saw him. Ice Meister. Memories of the last time we fought came flooding back to me. I was a lot bigger than I am right now when I lost to him, but it seemed like he used some kind of enchantment on me. I had to find out more. I approached Ice Meister confidently. Remember me? It can't be. You're the Fire Witherstorm from across the river. That's right. And you're going to stop sending ice mobs into the Firelands, or we're gonna have a problem. Heh. <laughs> Pathetic little puff of smoke. I'll let you live just this once, but only because I've already sealed your power away. I didn't know what he meant, but I had the feeling he wouldn't be so understanding if I stuck around. I turned back towards the river so that I could make my way home. When I got to the stone bridge, I noticed a brown bear halfway over the bridge. Oh, hey, don't mind me. Please, don't tell me you're another ice mob invading my territory. Me? Not at all. I'm trying to get somewhere warmer. Are you from the Firelands? Actually, I used to be top dog over there. I am Zozo the Fire Witherstorm. I'm Reginald. All the other bears like the cold, but I'd rather be in a nicer climate. Everywhere Ice Master goes, he freezes the terrain and starts building cities made out of ice. Well then you'll be right at home in the Firelands. It'll always be warm there. On days 11 to 12, Reginald and I returned to my base on the fire side of the river. I soon made an extra room for him with a sunroof so he could get the most out of the pleasant weather. After that, I went to mine for more iron with my stone pickaxe. Because of all the lava, the Firelands were rich in obsidian, which I could gather later. It's a sturdy material that would make my base stronger. But before I could get enough ingots, I was ambushed by a wildkin! It did a ton of damage with a single attack! Ow! My heart! I couldn't get any further into the iron mine with that mob down there, so I ran back above ground. I have to unlock more of my former abilities. What else do other storms do? I concentrated as hard as I could on one of the nearby magma cubes. With some effort, I was able to fire a Wither Skull projectile. The mob was destroyed in one hit. Wither Skulls, that's it. The Wildkin would take more than a few Wither Skull attacks to be defeated, but I could at least weaken it before it got close. I went back down into the iron mine and put my plan into action. The Wildkin was waiting for me, so I wasted no time blasting him with three Wither Skulls. Now I could fight at close range without worrying about getting worn out. Wildkin's claws were still doing damage to me, but I had three tentacles, so my attacks were much faster. Once I beat him, I crafted an iron pickaxe and mined the obsidian from the surface of the Firelands. This obsidian will look great on my base! 
I was right. The obsidian made a perfect addition to the outer walls. My base was becoming a real fortress. On days 13 to 15, I started to remember more of what happened back when I was a fully grown fire witherstorm. I was huge and absorbing everything in sight. I remember the terrain being covered in ice, but unlike the snowy biome next door, it was the middle of the ocean. I must have been able to fly here from the Firelands. Down below, I saw Ice Meister. He was slightly smaller than the present day, so this must have been his younger self. <laughs> You're not so tough. Move aside, Pipsqueak. I won't let you destroy my home. He sounded really upset, and from the look of things, it seemed like I was the one who had attacked first. I saw Ice Meister hold a black block, and it began absorbing me. No, impossible! My destructive power! Your true form is sealed now. It will never escape this enchanted block. I fell down to the ground, a tiny and weak version of what I used to be. I'll be back one day! Ice Meister called some other snowmen to put me on a block of ice, which floated away from this land and down the river to the Firelands. Back then, the Firelands were on both sides of the river. The dream ended there. It seemed like Ice Meister just wanted revenge because of what I did, but he showed mercy to me the last time I was there in spite of that. I can't believe I used to be the bad guy. I should just leave the ice mobs alone from now on. That might be the only way to make up for all the destruction I caused when I was big. On days 16 to 19, I decided to tell Reginald about the memories I was having. I felt really bad about what I did, so I needed to talk to a friend. I thought Ice Meister was the bad guy, but it turns out I made him that way because I bullied him and melted his home. That is a lot. Have you thought of saying sorry and trying to do something nice for him? I might have messed up too badly for that. There's no way to undestroy something. Being sad about it won't fix the problem, neither. Ah, you wouldn't get it. I ran away from the base, leaving Reginald behind. He was better off without me anyway. I was a destructive bad guy, and he was just a regular bear. How could he understand what I was feeling right now? While I was out wandering the Firelands, I saw a village under attack by taiga zombies. Oh no, I have to help! Without even thinking, I raced to the aid of the villagers. The zombies were easier to defeat this time, now that I was bigger and I could clear out several at once. The villagers cheered as I drove the last of the ice mobs off. Their home was saved, and I actually felt good. The Firelands were attacked because of me, but I'm going to save them anyway. I can't change the past, but I will stop this war and save my home. Thank you, Zozo. We were hoping someone would protect our village from the ice mobs, but we never expected you would return to save us. I'm back, and better than ever. The villagers brought a large stack of blocks out of their houses and set them down in front of me. We were storing these blocks for you to absorb, so you could become strong again. You're not afraid of my true form? No way! You were always nice to us fire mobs, and with you around, nobody messed with us. Go on, absorb those blocks. I did what the villager said and became an even larger fire witherstorm. My total number of tentacles was five, and I had three heads now. Hi, hello. My armor and hearts were both increased too, with iron level durability and 25 hearts. I was really starting to resemble my old self. In a good way, I hoped. Do you villagers know anything more about how I used to be? We do know one thing. The legendary block that contained your true form was hidden away by Ice Master after he defeated you the first time. If you can find that, you'll be back to full power in no time. Full power? I like the sound of that. Even though taking my old form could make me a bad guy again, I decided to find the sealed block anyway. If I'm going to end this war, I may as well be prepared to do whatever it takes. On days 20 to 22, I went back to the base so I could apologize to Reginald for running away. I found him outside the base, fending off some polar bears. It's over, Reginald. You're coming home with us. No, this is my friend's base, and I'm protecting it until he comes back. You're a fool. We were right to kick you out of the polar bear club. I ran over to help. Reginald, I'm back. I'm so sorry I yelled at you. Oh. It's the firestorm! Retreat! The polar bears ran away in fear in the sight of me. Thank you, Zozo. I'm glad you came back. What are friends for? Now that the base was safe from the ice mobs, I started laying the foundation for a statue. I would need a lot of obsidian, so I got to mining as much as I could. With my pickaxe, I diverted part of the river into the firelands to create even more obsidian where the lava was flowing freely. This also let me improve the base with a moat that even the ice mobs would have trouble crossing. I made sure to give it a drawbridge, and I filled it with lava. That should be enough obsidian to get started. What do you think I'm building? Also, subscribe to Zozo if you want to see more of my adventures. On days 23 to 26, the base was attacked by more ice mobs. 
Those polar bears who bullied Reginald must have told Ice Master where I was. There was a whole pack of frost stalkers trying to get in. They were some strong mammoths, but fortunately, they weren't the kind that were clever enough to open doors. Thanks to the blocks I absorbed in the village, I was big and strong enough to give them a real thrashing. The last one to be defeated dropped their pelt, which I used to craft a frost stalker cloak. With this, I could disguise myself as a frost stalker and infiltrate the snowy biomes. I traveled over the stone bridge and into the cold forest where the frost stalkers lived. The cloak's disguise worked like a charm. I could tame the frost stalkers and have them keep other mobs out of the forest. The trees here were made of spruce wood, which couldn't be found in the Firelands. I should take some home with me since I'm here. I would have stayed longer, but I was worried about being discovered by the Ice Meister. I went back to the base and built myself a fireplace that would put the spruce wood to good use. When I went back outside, I saw a fire elemental hanging outside the walls of the base. Excuse me, is this where the resistance is? Resistance? You know, the resistance against Ice Meister and his army of ruthless conquerors. Some villagers told me that the fire with a storm was coming back. Is that you? Yep, that's me. Oh wow, I'm your biggest fan. I wanted to join up with you and help save our home. You're a fan of me? Wow, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I'll let you in. It's safer inside of the base. Sweet. I added a room made completely out of obsidian to the base for the fire elemental to live inside. On days 27 to 31, I had another vision, but this time it wasn't from the past, but from the present. I could feel my sealed destructive power calling out for me from inside the enchanted block. It seemed like it had been locked away inside of some kind of underground vault. I didn't get to see the outside of the chamber, but my best guess was that the entrance was somewhere in the snowy biome. I went to the stone bridge in order to cross, but saw that it had been destroyed while I was away. That must have been the Ice Meister's doing. It looked like the mob who did it was still there. A ferocious yeti that was bigger and badder than any ice creature I had faced yet. It snarled and charged at me. You may have wrecked my bridge, but I'm a lot tougher. I launched a wither skull at him before hitting him with the tentacle grab. The yeti attacks were strong, but so were mine. After fighting the big lug for a bit, I let go of the grapple and pushed him into the river. The fast-moving current washed him far away. I jumped over the gaps of the bridge and made it to the other side. On days 32 to 35, I came across a village of icemen. They'll probably attack me if they find out who I really am. I'd better blend in. I used the Frostwalker cloak in hopes that they'd think I was just a mammoth passing through. It didn't really work. Eh, it's the leader of the fire mobs! Darn it, there goes that plan. What do you want with us? Don't be afraid, I'm not a bad guy anymore. I just want my powers to be unsealed. Do you know where the Ice Meister is keeping the block? I can tell you that it's not anywhere in the Snowlands. Ice Meister didn't want you to invade us looking for it. I'm not invading, I swear. Like we'd believe you. It wasn't on this side of the river. That was bad news on its own. Uh -oh. It was even worse because the villagers were really scared of me. I figured I might as well leave, and then Ice Meister showed up. What's this, Iceman? Are you seriously being friends with a fire mob? That's not cool. No, Ice Meister. It's the leader. The fire witherstorm you sealed away. That's even worse. I should have you all frozen for this betrayal. Hey, don't blame them. I'm the one you want. And you. I told you I'd only spare you once. Then come and get me. Ice Meister started chasing me, so I ran away from the Iceman village back to the river. Thinking quickly, I took a risk and jumped in. The water would deal damage to me, but I had enough hearts to withstand it now. I had gotten away from the Ice Meister, but the current took me for a ride. That was until I hit an ice bridge further down the river and was able to swim back to shore. It was the Icemen. They had come to save me. Thank you for distracting Ice Meister. He's gotten really angry lately, and he's obsessed with war. You protected us, so I guess we misjudged fire mobs. No sweat. Come on, follow me back to the base. On days 36 to 39, I made some big changes to the base so the Icemen who were staying here wouldn't be too uncomfortable with the heat. I carefully made a big pool filled with water for them to cool off. You can never have enough water fun. Er, well, I can, but you guys have a good time. You got that right. Now that you're all here, why don't you tell me more about that block that contains my true form? Ice Meister said he hid it in a place that is neither fiery or icy. A pasture with a balanced climate and huge fields of crops. It sounds like there wouldn't be any war happening there. Yeah, wherever it is. After talking to the Iceman, I did some more work on my statue. I've moved past the foundation and it's starting to take shape. Do you know what it could be? On days 40 to 43, the base was visited by a friendly dragonfly. Salutations! I've heard that you're trying to take the fight to the Ice Meister. 
You heard correctly. All right. It just so happens that I know about a way to upgrade your wither skulls. Oh, tell me, tell me. There's an ice mob outpost upriver from here where they are keeping the power up, which will turn your wither skulls to blue wither skulls. It's guarded by a goat centaur archer, so be careful. I followed the dragonfly's advice and went to the outpost. As soon as I got there, the archer started opening fire. I avoided the arrows and struck back with my wither skulls. Kablam! I'm a pretty good shot. Inside the outpost was the blue wither skull power up. I absorbed it, and my projectile attacks became twice as strong. These blue ones do serious damage. I felt the call of my sealed self further upriver, so I decided to trust that feeling and keep going. On days 44 to 49, I was astounded by how beautiful the biome around me was. There were crops growing everywhere, and the grass was lush and green. So this is what the world would look like if fire and ice weren't fighting? There were still dangers out here. A whole pack of coyotes tried to eat me, but I was too spicy. That's a fire joke. The coyotes turned away from me and ran back into the field of crops. I saw them a couple seconds later chasing a poor scarecrow. Help! Help! If only I had a way out of this mess! Hang on! I'm coming! I ran in and smacked the coyotes with my sword, scaring them off. Why were they chasing you? I thought coyotes ate meat. They're vegetarian coyotes, and most of my body is made out of vegetables. Oh, glad I could help. I'm Straw Bastion. Feel free to make yourself at home. There are plenty of crops here, all nourished by the magical power source we keep underground. This magical power source wouldn't happen to look like a black block, would it? Oh, I've never seen it personally. All I know is that it has a great fiery power which can keep the ground nice for cultivating crops. That has to be my sealed form. On days 50 to 53, I followed Straw Bastion as he showed me around his peaceful land. I was keen to get my hands on my true form, but I didn't want to scare him since he seemed like a nice guy. Has this place always been so peaceful? There isn't any great war, if that's what you're asking. But we do have our own problems. Huh? Like what? Look around. All this delicious food and nobody to eat it. Every season, so much of it goes bad because the people in the surrounding lands don't come to visit. Well, I'll make sure that changes. That reminds me, there's another traveler here. Oh, how nice. Do I know them? Turns out I did. The Yeti who broke my bridge jumped out and attacked me. He must have swam all the way back up. Let's finish what we started. I grappled him and we began to fight. Straw Bastion got scared, so he ran away. I wanted to go check on him, but I had to teach this Yeti a lesson first. Don't break people's stuff. I hit him with my wither skull and the Yeti was no more. After the fight, I looked around for Straw Bastion, but couldn't find him. I guess I'll come back later. I was walking home when I ran into another vegetable person. This one had a tomato for a head. Wait, are tomatoes fruits or vegetables? What's it to ya? Sorry, I'm just looking for the legendary enchanted block. How do you get to it? You gotta dig for it, but you'll need better tools than that. There's a garden shed nearby with a strong shovel you can use. I took the tomato man's advice and found a diamond shovel inside of a nearby abandoned shed. The shed was too small for me, so I used my tentacle to pull the shovel towards me without damaging the shack. On days 54 to 57, I told everyone at the base about the peaceful fields upstream. All the fire and ice villagers were excited about all the food there and wanted to visit. To make the journey easier, I made rowboats out of the spruce wood. While I was working, Reginald came outside to join me. He said he wanted to ask me something. What is it, buddy? I wanted to mention something about this place with all the vegetables. Doesn't it sound amazing? It does, for everybody else. But bears don't eat greens. We prefer fish, and lots of it. Oh, I get what you're saying. You want me to rustle up a source of fish so that you can have your favorite food too. Yeah, as long as it's not too much to ask. You've got nothing to worry about, my friend. I decided to go fishing, but not with nets or fishing poles. I dug a gigantic hole in the ground. It was big enough to be a pond. Just add water. Reginald would have all the fish he needed right here at the base. Thank you so much. Here's a weapon I think you could use. Like you, it's a destroyer. Reginald handed me a powerful breaking weapon. My excavations would be a lot easier with that bad boy in my arms. On days 58 to 62, the statue was really starting to come together. You could almost guess what it was going to be. A new wave of ice mobs suddenly broke through the base's defenses. There were ice piglins, frost stalkers, and even new enemies I hadn't seen before. Who let them in? Zozo, help! 
I saw Reginald being attacked by those polar bears again. Thinking quickly, I put on my Froststalker helmet and sent some of the Froststalkers to deal with them. Reginald and I ran away to another part of the base together. When we were there, we saw that the fire villagers and Icemen were fighting. Hey, break it up! What's going on here? I knew we couldn't trust the people of the Snowlands. You're the ones who couldn't accept us. Enough! I shouted loudly and got everyone's attention. I probably scared them, but at least they stopped fighting. Stay here and don't hurt each other. I'll go deal with the enemies outside. Reginald, you're in charge. Yes, sir. I left Reginald and the villagers in the safe place behind my house and fought back the ice mobs single-handedly. There was one friend I hadn't seen in there, and I was becoming worried. Come on, Fire Elemental, where are you? I discovered him at the drawbridge, surrounded by ice mobs. They had already depleted most of his health by the time I got there. I wanted to do something, but it was too late. Sorry, Zozo. I thought we could win, so I called for a battle. It's okay. I'm here now. We'll win. Oh, good. You can do it, Zozo. With that, the fire elemental faded away. He had been so brave, and unlike me, he wasn't coming back from this. This was Ice Meister's fault, and he was going to pay. On day 63 to 66, I went to the Snowlands and tried to convince the local creatures to stop the war. This battle is between Ice Meister and myself. None of you need to get involved. If you don't want to fight me, there is a place at the top of the river with plenty of food and no war. If you stay here, Ice Meister will force you to invade the Firelands. A few of them seemed to listen and started heading upstream, but one ran out of the crowd of snow creatures and attacked me! For Ice Meister, I will defeat you! You cannot be allowed to reclaim your true form! He was strong, so I had to fight back. At least I wasn't picking on the weaker ones. Stop it! More fighting is not the solution! It's too late! You already melted our home once, and most of the world too! How do you think the Firelands ended up burned and destroyed? I did that? Yes! You are the Fire Witherstorm! You are the true evil in this world! Please! I'm going to be nicer! You don't have to do this! He wouldn't listen! I had no other choice! I defeated him with a blue Wither Skull attack! The other ice creatures ran away! I'm sorry! On days 67 to 70, I caught up with some of the other ice mobs that had gone to the crop field. At least they are safe. I saw some ruins in the distance and went to check them out. With the destroyer, I started to dig into the earth until I came upon a vault made of bedrock. Wow. Even the destroyer couldn't get through this, probably because of enchantments. I dug around more and found an entrance, but it was guarded. Somehow, this guardian seemed familiar. I was wondering when you'd show up. Who are you? And why do I feel like I know you? That's when I received another memory of the past. I saw myself as a fire witherstorm raging across the land. I saw everything on both sides of the river get turned to ash and lava. By my side the whole time was my loyal pack of Cerberus mobs and their leader, Tartarus. The same Tartarus that was standing in front of me, guarding the entrance to the vault. Tartarus? You remember now? I don't understand. Why are you guarding the vault, buddy? My true form is inside of there, and I need it to defeat Ice Meister. The only thing you need is to return home and give up on this quest for the legendary block. I can't do that. People have gotten hurt because of this war. People have gotten hurt because of you too. I'm here to stop you from becoming your worst self again. Even if that means Ice Meister becomes my worst self instead? Yes, even if that happens. Then I'm sorry for what I have to do. As Tartarus and I began to fight, all of his special attacks started to come back to me. I avoided his breath weapon and his breaking claw strikes. I pelted him with wither skulls until we clashed head to head. You were really strong, old friend. Sorry again. I drew the destroyer and swung it at him, but he dodged and ran away. Rather than chase after him, I checked the vault for my sealed form. On day 71 to 74, I entered the room that had haunted my dreams. This was definitely where the block that held my true form had been. I said, had been, because it wasn't there now. Someone had taken it. I felt its call again from far away and realized immediately what had happened. Tartarus must have been keeping the block in his own inventory. He was really determined to keep me from returning to my full self. He's probably on his way to Ice Meister right now to hide the block again. I didn't want to have to fight Tartarus again, but if he was with Ice Meister, the two of them would be unbeatable at my current level. Dejected, I left the empty vault behind. On day 75 to 78, I asked the Froststalkers I had recruited during the ice mob attack what they eat. Like Reginald, the Froststalkers ate fish too, so I used the destroyer to make the pond bigger. All of them will have enough to eat now. 
You've really made this place feel like home for me. Have this. I think it'll help. Reginald gave me a book with an enchantment that could make me take no extra damage from water. Thanks, Reg. This will come in handy next time I cross the river. You're welcome, pal. Well, aren't we awfully buddy-buddy? Oh no, Tartarus! Seems like you have a new best friend. I should have known you'd leave me behind. Tartarus, where is my true form? Doesn't matter. You're not yourself anymore. I'm going to end this bitter memory once and for all. He lunged forward. I drew the destroyer. Run, Reginald! Be careful, Zozo! The second battle between me and Tartarus began. I could still sense his moves, but he was fighting like I'd never seen him fight before. It took everything I had to keep on fighting until I struck him down at last. That was a good hit. You weren't totally different after all. Tartarus, why? Listen closely, because I only have time to say this once. I brought Icemeister the legendary block, and he probably still has it. That means I can get it back from him. Yes, but pay attention. That sealed block has had its destructive energy reversed through enchantments. That's why all the plants grew so beautifully in that field above. They are all going to wilt away if you don't put it back. But what about me? My power? Looks like you'll have to make a difficult decision. I wish you luck. Tartarus! Tartarus! Hey, I'll still be there for you. Just absorb me, and I can help. Okay, I absorbed Tartarus and grew even larger. I was close to a full-size Witherstorm now. I had 60 hearts and diamond-level durability. Thanks, buddy. I'll never forget my oldest friend. On day 79 to 84, I crossed the river without the bridge because I was too big to get swept up in the current. I took the forest route, saying hello to my friends the Froststalkers along the way. Hello. Oh, hey there. The voice came out of a nearby tree. Or should I say, treant. Whoa, I didn't see you there. Didn't mean to sneak up on ya. I'm the gardener of the field, and I've come to give this Ice Meister fella a stern how do you do. How do you do? Doing quite well, thank you. Yourself? I'm actually looking for Ice Meister too. Believe it or not, we might be after the same item. You mean the legendary power source that nourishes our crops? Yep, I used to want to have it for a different reason, but I've decided it belongs in that vault where it can help people. I like your thinking. You're not as mean and evil and scary as you look. Thanks, I guess. I traveled together with the gardener until we saw a formidable fortress of snow and ice on the horizon. I suppose that must be Ice Meister's place. I would keep walking, but I'm pretty tired. You could say I'm bushed. Same, and I have a feeling that he's not going to make this easy for us to get the block back. How about we return to my base for now and discuss strategy? I like where your head's at, all three of them. On days 85 to 89, I told the gardener of the field everything about my journey so far, including how I used to be a bad guy when I was the ruler of the Firelands and how I was trying to stop the war. Sounds to me like you've seen and done a lot of things since you first spawned into this world so long ago. Changing into a better person from who you were in the past isn't easy, but that's what growing up is all about. If only I could make Ice Meister understand that. I don't think he'll ever forgive me, and that makes me sad. Well, to be honest with you, Ice Meister and you might never be friends, but there's a lesson in that. You are a being of pure destruction who brings fire down upon the world, while Ice Meister creates snowy landscapes and gives a sense of urgency to all the creatures he meets. You two are polar opposites, and this world needs both of you. Okay, I sorta understand, but how do I stop him from creating war? I just want the mobs to live in peace. I'll let you in on a little secret, Zozo. I was the one who enchanted that block. Wait, you helped seal my powers? Yes, and look how it turned out. Don't you feel free now? I do, actually. Well, there is your answer. Together, we will free Ice Meister from his ambitions, and the war will come to an end. I'll enchant a new ceiling block, but you'll need to gather the raw materials. Done. On days 90 to 94, I searched high and low for as many emeralds as I could find. After that, I traveled to every village on both sides of the river that would let me in. Sorry, sorry, I know I'm scary. Little by little, news spread across the land that I only wanted to trade emeralds for bottles of enchanting. They started treating me like a regular guy, which I really appreciated, even though I was too big to get inside the villages. Throughout my travels, I gathered a whole bunch of bottles of enchantment and returned to the gardener. These will do. Give me a few days and I'll have the seal ready. Awesome! With some of the leftover enchantment bottles, I decided to give myself the fire aspect enchantment. It worked! My wither skulls had turned red and could now catch any enemy that they hit on fire. On days 95 to 97, I completed the statue. It had been a statue of TARDIS all along. 
I didn't even know that when I started building it, but I guess there are some things you never forget, no matter how much you change. My oldest and most loyal friend would now be remembered as a beautiful statue for all to see. And every time I saw the statue, I would remember him. You've done all right, Zozo. Thank you for remembering me. Tartarus? Yep, it's me. I heard his voice inside of my head. Okay, this is kinda really weird. Don't worry, I won't be doing this all the time. Just wanted to tell you that I'm proud you chose to put the legendary block back where it truly belongs. Well, some things are more important than getting back something you lost, or even being the most powerful fire witherstorm in the world. You'll always be number one in my book. Thanks, Tardis. On day 98, I told the villagers that they could all go home if they wanted to, because very soon, there wouldn't be a war on either side of the river. But this is our home. Oh, right. I guess you fire guys can stay. What about you, Iceman? We're not sure. There were so many great memories in this place. I don't know if we want to leave yet. Oh, stay as long as you like. Well, I'm definitely staying. Of course, Reginald. I wouldn't have it any other way. You're gonna go fight Ice Master soon, aren't you? Yeah, buddy. It sure seems that way. Do your best, okay? And come back safe. This base is not a home without you. Of course I'll be back. Shortly after that, the gardener walked in with the new enchanted block we'd be using to seal Ice Meister's evil side. Zozo, my boy, it is time. The sealing block is complete. We're going right now to the fortress of Ice Meister. All right, let's go. I said my goodbyes to everyone at the base. This adventure is almost at the most exciting part, so soon I'll be saying goodbye to you too. But don't worry, we'll have lots of other adventures together. Subscribe to the channel and go watch some of my other ones after this. There are so many to enjoy, like the time I spent 100 days as a lava wither. On day 99, the gardener and I returned to the fortress of Ice Meister and found that it wasn't guarded at all. Where is everyone? It looks like you've brought peace to this land after all, Zozo. Must have been all that traveling and trying to do the right thing. Yeah, and most of all, he has no other mobs to fight for him. This is our chance! Yes. I blasted my way in and realized that I wasn't completely correct. There were traps everywhere that shot ice and snow at me and the gardener. Uh -oh. Ooh, help! I'm not an evergreen tree. These cold temperatures are going to make my leaves fall off. Just stay close to me. I'll keep you warm. A trap door opened up beneath us. No, no, this is it. No way. I jumped over the spikes and landed safely on the other side. Then I used my tractor beam to catch the gardener and grapple him to safety. Thanks, you're using your fire witherstorm powers for good. Never thought I'd see the day. You're right, I don't have to be a bad guy, even though I'm fiery and scary. I can help people just the way I am. Now you know, let's go get your true form back. You mean, you're letting me have the other block? Sure, the field only needs one at a time, and you've had your turn. Now, it's Ice Meister's turn. I can't believe I'm going to be returning to my true form after yes. all. This is so exciting. On day 100, the gardener and I came face to face with Ice Meister. He was holding the block that contained my true form. It's over, Ice Meister. Give back what you stole and we'll make this easy. Easy? You think there's an easy way out of this? I don't think so. You're a fire witherstorm and you're bad to the bone. Your path of destruction won't stop as long as you still exist. No, it stops now. I'm good and I can prove it to you. Zozo is telling the truth, Ice Meister. Why don't you call it quits? Our plants need that block. You mean this block? Ice Meister held up the block with my true form inside and absorbed it, becoming a terrifying new version of himself. As if that weren't bad enough, Ice Meister also spawned a bunch of other snowmen to attack us. Seize them, little ones. The gardener looked at me and held up the new enchanted block. I'll fire the ceiling spell up. You keep him and his minions busy. You got it. I unleashed all my powers on the miniature snowmen. I made sure to clear all of them out first before facing off against Ice Meister. You'll never defeat me, Zozo. I already have. You thought absorbing that power you took from me would help you win, but destructive power like that should only be used responsibly. And what would you know about that? More than you'd think. We all get to decide who we are, and I've decided that this is my true form. As soon as I said that, I instantly grew back to full size. I had 180 hearts. Now the playing field was even. Yes. While the Ice Meister was distracted, the gardener finished charging his spell. Zozo, now, move! I dodged out of the way as a beam shot forth from the block. In an instant, it absorbed Ice Meister's evil form and left behind only a tiny snowball. I'll get you for this. Okay, but take your time. 
Maybe you could be the good guy this time. With the seal set in place, the gardener was able to save the crops at his field. Meanwhile, I went back to my base in the Firelands. It was peaceful for now, and I hoped that would last. Either way, it was a good day to be myself. On day one, I spawned in as a fire spider. Oh cool, I got eight legs and four hearts. But whoa, I'm not a regular spider, I'm a fire spider. That means I have to avoid water no matter what. I should probably look around. I started testing out my new abilities. I can jump high, run super fast, and climb up walls. Woohoo! Just as I was jumping from tree to tree, a swarm of tarantula hawks started to attack. Ah, where did you come from? Quickly, I jumped off of the tree and started running away. But these guys were fast. They even took out some of my hearts. Ouch, I need those. Realizing that I couldn't outrun these guys forever, I decided I needed to fight. I wonder if I have something that could help me fight these tarantula hawks. Just then I looked into my inventory and saw I had an item, web shot, throw at your enemies to attack or stun them. This should work. Quickly, I put this ability into effect and started throwing webs at the tarantula hawks. Whoa, this is awesome. I managed to bring down several of the tarantula hawks with my web shot until there was only one left. He quickly fled before I could take him down. Ha, and stay out you flying fiend. I proceeded to look around a little more before I decided to call it a night. On day two, I woke up hungry and decided to make my first web. I placed it in the tree and waited. Soon, I caught a fly. Mmm, tasty. Then I went and took a look around. I stumbled upon a hole in the ground and decided to check it out. Maybe I can find some more fire spiders here. Well, I couldn't find any more fire spiders, I managed to find some stone, but I couldn't mine it because it required tools. I better go get some resources. Just as I was about to leave, a bunch of badgers started to attack. Ah, hey, what's the big deal? These guys were tough, but I managed to fling web shots at them and managed to defeat them. They dropped some loot in the process. I picked up a stone pickaxe and sword. Oh, these will come in handy. With the pickaxe, I mined the stone and even found some iron that I could use for later. Wow, this hole is great. After checking to make sure there were no more badgers, I decided to set up camp in the hole. After clearing out some space, I set up a little place for myself, and even started to build other houses, just in case some more spiders were to come. On day three, I climbed out of the hole and started gathering wood from the surrounding trees. Just as I was about to bring down one of the trees, I heard a noise. Hey, stop that down there. Suddenly, a pigeon flew down from the top. What do you think you are doing? Oh, sorry, I didn't know anyone was living in this tree. Well, there is. You can't just go around destroying everything you see like some kind of barbarian. I didn't mean any harm, I promise. He sighed. Just be careful next time. Just as the pigeon was talking, a falcon came out of nowhere and started to attack. Oh no, not this guy. You better run, little fire spider. Instead, I used my web to attack the falcon and knock him out of the sky. Oh, thank you so much. That falcon has been attacking me and my friends for a long time. You're most welcome. I'm always looking for ways I can help. Why was he attacking you? He is a servant of the Lizard King, the evil ruler who enslaves animals with fear. Oh no, that's terrible. This Lizard King sounds like he's a real handful to deal with. My name is Percy, and I would be happy to help you with anything you need. Thank you, I could use help. You know, I have a place that you and your friends can stay to keep away from falcons. It's underground, and I'm still building it. Would you like to come? Most of the time, pigeons don't like living underground, but that sounds like the safe idea. On days four and five, I helped Percy put together some houses for him and his friends. This place is going to look great, Zozo. A safe haven away from the Lizard King. You're right. I'm going to have to see if I can get more critters out of danger. I also don't know where any fire spiders are. Well, in the meantime, I will stay here and continue working. Before you go, I wanted to give you this. Percy gave me some iron armor and a sword, made from the iron I had found earlier. I thought it best for your journey. Take care, my fiery spider friend. Thanks, Percy. I will return. Soon, I was off to find the Lizard King, when all of a sudden, the tarantula hawk I fought on the first day returned with even more of his friends. We shall have our revenge on you. They all started swarming me with their stingers. Ouch, leave me alone. With the new sword, I managed to defeat most of the tarantula hawks, but the main tarantula hawk was heading right for me. I will defeat you and take you to the Lizard King myself. He was tougher to beat than the other tarantula hawks. I even took some damage from him. You may be strong, but I won't be defeated. Dodging his blows with my speed and jumping ability, I kept on striking him until at last he was defeated. As he disappeared, he dropped some bronze armor as well as a beaker of poison. If I'm going to come in contact with any more of the Lizard King's minions, I'm gonna need this. On day six through eight, I continued my journey to find the Lizard King. Along the way, I managed to find a village. Hello, anyone here? I went through all the buildings, gathering supplies where I could find them, but could not find anyone. How could an entire village just vanish like this? I started hearing what sounded like voices from one of the center buildings. Maybe there are some villagers still here. After following the voices, I discovered who was in the building. It was the Lizard King. He had on a huge crown and had big red eyes. Yikes, those are gonna haunt my nightmares. Gathering up what courage I had, I charged towards the Lizard King. 
Hey, why are you being so cruel to all the creatures of this land? They just want to live peaceful lives, free from bullies like you. The Lizard King looked at me with those red eyes. The tiny fire spider who defeated my tarantula hawks. You will pay for your actions. Attack! Then all of a sudden, the floor started shaking, and from out of the ground spawned a giant desert centipede. Uh-oh, this could be bad. The centipede was strong. It had over 20 hearts, and it was quick. It's a good thing I can jump and climb, or this thing would surely take me out. Then I remembered I had the beaker of poison and prepared to use it on the centipede. Just as I was about to use it, the centipede attacked and knocked the beaker out of my hand, shattering on the floor. Oh no! The centipede grabbed onto me, shaking me around with its mandibles and shaking the hearts out of me. This is not good! Just as I was about to lose my last heart, the Lizard King commanded he let me go. That's enough. I still need subjects to rule. You really thought you could defeat me? Huh. Come back again when you are worthy. <laughs> that fight did a lot of damage to me, and all of a sudden, I blacked out. On days 9 and 10, I awoke to a different location. It looked like one of the houses in the village, only it was really damaged and there were webs on the walls. Ah! Spiders! Oh, wait, I'm a spider too. I climbed around the damaged house to see if any more spiders were around. Hello? Any other spiders around here? Regular or fire type? Any will do. Or anyone? Preferably ones who don't want to squish me? I looked around a little more and eventually I spotted what appeared to be a small, normal spider. Hey, where am I? Oh good, you're awake. It's good to see you up. Where's the Lizard King? Where's the centipede? You fought the Lizard King and his centipede? It's a miracle you're still alive. When I found you, they were both gone. I was really worried you weren't going to wake up, but couldn't not help a spider in need. We brought you here to look after you. We? Who's we? Well, me and my brothers and sisters. Huh? Brothers and sisters? There's more of you? Oh yes, at least 700. We live in dark, shadowy areas near here, under the protection of Daddy Longlegs. Would you like to meet him? Sure. Oh, and what's your name? Marcy. I'm a jumping spider. Indeed. Lead the way, Marcy. On days 11 to 12, Marcy led me to a secret passageway where we climbed down into a dark hall. Through the hall, we came upon the cave of Daddy Longlegs. It was surrounded by several different spiders of all different types and sizes. Daddy Longlegs, here is the fire spider who fought the centipede. He is healed and wishes to meet with you. Proceed, good spider. I am Zozo, and I come to help fight against the evil of the Lizard King. You are indeed brave, Zozo, but I am afraid the Lizard King cannot be defeated. What do you mean? How can he not be defeated? He controls the predators of the animal kingdom, forcing us spiders to live underground. Any attempt we have tried to fight against him, he takes out numbers of us. I'm afraid it's too risky for our survival. I understand your concern, Daddy Longlegs, but we cannot keep living in fear. Someone has to do something. If nobody else will, then I will. But I know together we can do better, be stronger. Some of us might be squashed in a moment, but surely he can't stop all of us. Then I could hear Marcy cheering from the back. Huzzah! Huzzah! Her cheering led to all the other spiders starting to cheer as well. Huzzah! Huzzah! Daddy Longlegs looked convinced and agreed to help me. All right, Zozo, you have made your point. I will send some spiders to help you on your journey. Perhaps we truly can defeat the Lizard King. Three spiders volunteered to help me on my quest. First was Taylor, a massive tarantula. <laughs> yeah, dude. Then there was Bruno, an orb-weaving spider. Do you need a web? I got a web. It's a nice web. Did I tell you about my web? This guy really likes his web. Yeah, man. Finally, there was Scarlet. She was a black widow. I can turn anyone's life into a tragedy. Well, I hope that will come in handy for us. Nice to meet all of you. Together, let's take this guy down. On days 13 to 15, we arrived back at my hole base. I didn't know how Percy and his friends were going to take there being more spiders, so I proceeded with caution. Hello, Zozo. Hey, Percy. Wow, you got a lot of work done. This base is looking even better than I thought it could. Thanks. I managed to convince some other birds and animals to come make this the new home. You've done great. Hey, I wanted to tell you something. Sure. What is... Oh, more spiders. What the? What are these animals doing here? They look tasty to me. Yeah, dude. Before this tension was to become a battle, I had to calm down both sides. Listen, in order for us to defeat the Lizard King, we must stay strong together, no matter what species we are. Also, no eating the birds. Yeah. All right, sorry. After that was over, I managed to get everyone working together to create a giant statue of our hero. I hoped it could be seen as a symbol of justice and goodness for all walks of life. Can you tell what we're building? On days 16 to 19, I got a chance to meet all the new members of the base. Hey, how are you? Good to see ya. Welcome. I even ran into some unexpected guests. 
Oh no, the badgers again! Wait, we're sorry for attacking you earlier. We just didn't have any other place to go. We saw how you built this place, and your friend Percy said it was okay for us to stay. So wait, we're all on the same team? Yep, we're also really sorry for attacking you earlier. It's alright. I guess I can understand you being scared of someone trying to harm you. Welcome to the base. I have said that no matter our differences, we've got to work together to defeat the Lizard King. Thank you. Just as I was going around meeting new people, I saw Marcy run in looking for me. I am delivering gifts for you for your journey. These are from Daddy Longlegs. Marcy presented me with a new silver armor and sword with a special ability, Poisonous Attack. What would I do without you and Daddy Longlegs? This will be great for my journey. Thanks, Marcy. You're welcome. Say, this place is pretty nice. Do you think I can tell the other spiders about it? Sure. It's not quite finished, though. But maybe when I'm done, you guys can come see it. There's a lot of you, so I've got to make sure everyone is really impressed. Deal! On days 20 to 22, Taylor, Bruno, Scarlet, and I were off to catch the Lizard King. On the road, Scarlet spotted some signs up ahead. We should be careful. It looks like we are entering into the realm of the ants. Ants? Are they dangerous? They attack in numbers and can overwhelm any creature bigger than they are. Even someone like Taylor? Yeah, dude. Well, then we will definitely be cautious. I can't imagine anything worse than being dogpiled by a bunch of creepy crawlers. We scoured around for a bit, when all of a sudden a giant zombie praying mantis arose from under the ground. Gosh, he must have been attacked by the ants. Those guys are vicious. Yeah, now we gotta put him out of his misery. Bruno started making a web net to trap the praying mantis in, and Taylor threw it over to the mantis, trapping him. I think we got him. Just then, the mantis started tearing his way through the web net. Don't worry, guys, I got this. I jumped toward the praying mantis and started using my new sword. Say your prayers now, mantis. Within a few strikes, he was finally defeated, and I felt something inside me start to change. I increased in size and even had more hearts. My attacks felt stronger too, infused with even more fiery goodness. On days 23 to 26, we finally got to the ant hill. We need to be cautious. The ants could attack if we are spotted. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not interested in becoming a zombie fire spider today. Just then, a fireball flew overhead. It was the ant guards, and they were shooting at us with trebuchets. Ah, oh, talk about fire ants! All of a sudden, Bruno started working on what appeared to be a giant slingshot. Oh, great idea! Scarlet had some TNT, as well as some flint and steel. We decided that would work perfectly for returning fire. Bombs away! We took out the trebuchet and sent the ants running into their hill. Way to go, team! On days 27 to 31, we decided to go inside the hill. Wow, these guys have been busy. Inside, we found a lot of cool items that I could use for the compound and the statue. Glowstones, I can use these. As we journeyed deeper into the caves, we saw a hidden message on the wall. Subscribe? Huh, that's not a bad idea, honestly. Yeah, dude. A little further, and we began to see what appeared to be a story by the ants. Apparently, the queen ant was tricked by the Lizard King, and now he has a puppet queen acting for him. That's terrible. These ants should not be under the control of a puppet ruler. We need to do something. All of a sudden, something occurred. Ants began to crawl out from the walls. Get back! I mean it! No matter how hard we fought, the ants were too numerous, and they captured us. On days 32 to 35, the ants led us to the deeper parts of the ant hill. Where are you taking us? I kept trying to talk to them, but they would not respond. It was as if something was wrong with them completely. Hello, can you hear me? Eventually, we came to what I suppose is their throne room. The queen ant sat there looking sinister. Spiders? How disgusting! You will make a fine specimen for the Lizard King. Though my children and I are getting hungry. I'm getting pretty tired of creatures telling me they want to eat me. How about I give you something to eat instead? I looked up and I could see what looked like a chandelier made of glowstones. I fired a web shot at it and the whole thing started to come crashing down. No, not the chandelier! I fell hard onto the queen ant, squishing her. Whoa, what a way to go. On days 36 to 39, we began leaving the hill. The hill was even bigger than I remembered, as we wove through many different hallways. We got lost more than once. Man, how could one place look the same at every turn? When we finally decided on a place to go, more ants came toward us. If we couldn't get out, we'd be in real trouble. Stay back, we're armed! Well, technically lagged. No, please don't hurt us, and we don't want to hurt you. Okay, well then what is it you do want? We are servants of the true Queen Ant. When you defeated the other queen, we finally freed her, and she wanted to thank you. Well, that's very nice of her. I'm glad she's back on her throne. Feel free to come back anytime. If you have any questions, please let me know. I did have one question. How do we get out? Oh, right. You go up, make a left, and climb out of the big hole in the top. Okay, that seems simple enough. Thanks. No problem. You can climb, right? Uh, spider. Oh, <laughs> right. 
On days 40 to 43, we thought it would be best to get back to the compound and put these glowstones to good use. Percy was doing a great job building places for the new creatures finding out about this place. If there is one thing we birds know, it is how to make a nest to come home to. You're doing great, Percy. I also thought these could come in handy. Glowstones, excellent. It was starting to look a little dark here. Right away, we got to work using the glowstones to create light fixtures around the compound. I also made sure that these were built strong enough so that no one could get hurt if they were damaged. The last thing we'd want is for there to be another queen ant situation. No one likes to get smushed. When a spider builds something, it is made to last. Also when birds, badgers, and other wildlife chip in on the building, it definitely helps in the long run. On days 44 to 50, I continued working on the statue. I'm really excited about this one and feel like it's coming along really well. Can you tell what the statue is yet? All of a sudden, I could see a little jumping creature appearing in the horizon. Marcy, it's good to see you. Oh, Zozo, I'm glad I found you. I have terrible news. Huh? Oh no, what's the problem? The Lizard King attacked the spider base with an army of scorpions. Scorpions? Really? Yes, they are one of our biggest enemies. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. I really didn't think he'd be bold enough to take on the entire spider nest at one time. I'm sorry I couldn't have stopped him from doing this. So am I. I wanted to tell you so you won't have to have the same fate. Now we have nowhere safe. Wait a minute. Why don't you all come live at my base? Wait, really? Are you sure you won't mind all of us living with you? Of course not. Besides, us spiders need to stick together. Plus, I've got plenty of room here. There's no limit to the amount of houses we can make for everyone. Ha! Huh, I see what you did there. I better go tell the other spiders right now. Quickly, I got started gathering more materials and supplies to start building for my new neighbors. I took a good long while to gather the stuff and start building, but it was all worth it. On days 51 to 53, all of the spiders arrived. Whoa, there sure are a lot of you. Welcome. Among the spiders appeared Daddy Longlegs, and I went over to greet him. Hi, Daddy Longlegs. I'm glad to see you're all right. You're all welcome here. Thank you, Zozo, for doing this. You have given the spiders and many others hope. It was my pleasure. The spiders sure are honored and lucky to have a protector like you. Oh no, Zozo. I may have been their protector before, but you are their protector now. However, if you need advice, I will always be around. I will definitely appreciate that. I know you've seen a lot of spiders in your day. I'd never be able to lead anyone as well as you have. Afterwards, I introduced Daddy Longlegs and the other spiders to the rest of the compound. They got along pretty well. I love seeing everyone so happy to make new friends. On days 54 to 57, the whole compound got together to start building walls so no intruders could come in. When most of the building was completed, we decided we should celebrate the new compound community. Daddy Longlegs prepared to give a speech. I am truly thankful that we can all live in harmony thanks to our magnificent friend, Zozo. Oh, guys, I appreciate that. While Daddy Longlegs kept speaking, no one noticed a group of scorpions sneaking up behind him. Daddy Longlegs, look out! But he didn't hear me, and one of the scorpions stabbed him in the back with a stinger. Oh no, Daddy Longlegs! The spiders began attacking the scorpions while I tried to lead Daddy Longlegs to safety. Just stay here, you're gonna be fine. No, Zozo, it's time for me to go. What? You can't go, it's not over yet. It's okay, Zozo. Take care of them all for me. I will. I stayed with Daddy Longlegs until the end. When I checked back, the spiders won the battle. Sadly, it was up to me to share the sad news. On days 58 to 62, the whole compound worked together to build a memorial for Daddy Longlegs. Rest in peace, Daddy Longlegs. You will be missed by us all. I promise I will do what needs to be done. While we were sad at the loss of our friend, we all realized we needed better fortifications. We spent a good portion of the days building up the walls and putting up watchtowers. I was so embarrassed that we were attacked when we thought we were safe. They should protect us, but I just wish I could have done more. Don't go blaming yourself, Zozo. Nobody could have guessed what was going to happen. To take my mind off of all of this, I went back to finish the statue. Maybe this could give us some more hope. Now can you tell who our spider hero is? It's the most famous web slinger of all time. Spider-Man, of course. Just as I completed it, Scarlet showed up and told me a messenger came to see me. We ran to the gate to see it was the ant from the ant hill. Hello, what are you doing here? We heard about your attack. We are sorry for your loss. Thank you. It has been hard for a lot of us. Our queen wanted to give you something for your loss, as well as your fight against the Lizard King. Huh? The ant handed over a wrapped gift and told me to use it wisely. I couldn't wait to see what it was. I will definitely treasure this. Thank you, and thank your queen for me. I shall, and you are most welcome. On day 63 to 66, I opened the package to reveal a bunch of potions. Inside there was a health upgrade potion. I took it right away, and I gained eight more hearts. I took a look at the other potions. 
Stinger Shock can cause your enemy to be paralyzed and allow you to either heal or attack. Boy, if I ever run into that centipede again, I am gonna use this. I met with my friends and told them that this would be my final mission. Be careful, Sozo. I will. I promise to return. We have lost too many friends for me to fail. Good luck, Zozo. Go end this monster, once and for all. Yeah, dude. I said goodbye to my friends, and then I was off. All I could do was hope that I would see them again soon. On day 67 through 70, I journeyed off to find the Palace of the Lizard King. I first traveled toward the abandoned village where I first fought the centipede. I don't see him anywhere here. While I continued to look around, I spotted what appeared to be an ancient door. Huh, I wonder how long this has been here for. There was an inscription on the door that looked a little faded. I will with water when it rains. When sunlight comes, the water drains. To climb me is to achieve great gains. I quickly realized that it was a riddle and began putting it together. Uh, I got it, a water spout. The answer is a water spout. With this proclamation of the answer, the door cracked open to reveal a chest inside. I opened the box to show a full set of diamond armor and sword. I quickly put them to good use. Yeah, dude. I think I've been hanging out with Taylor a bit too much. On day 71 through 74, I traveled into the rainforest. Just as I was scurrying along the ground, a group of howler monkeys started throwing bananas at me. Oh, whoa, uh, at least it's just bananas. One of the monkeys was huge. He must have been their leader. I started throwing web shots at him, trying to knock him out of the tree. You are not defeating me today. I managed to knock several monkeys out of the trees, forcing them to run away. The big monkey was the only one left. You might be strong, but you won't get me. With one last web shot, I knocked the monkey out of the tree and cornered him. Where is the Lizard King? Where is his palace? The big monkey gestured over in a direction. Afterwards, I went off that way. You know, that monkey looked kind of familiar. Nah, yeah, it was probably nothing. On day 75 to 78, I journeyed along until I came to a river. Uh-oh, it's my old nemesis, water. The river was way too wide to try and jump, and I didn't want to risk falling in, so I decided to build a bridge. I was halfway finished when out of nowhere, who was to turn up but the scorpions again? You guys, I'll make you pay for what you have done. I readied my sword and prepared to attack. This is for Daddy Longlegs. I charged at the scorpions, and they leaped forward to attack me. They were strong, and I could tell they were trying to push me back into the water, but with my new armor, I could hold them off. I'll take you all on if I need to. Then I remembered I had the potion and quickly used it against the scorpions. Take this! The scorpions began to move slower, and I could see their attacks before they could make them. Block, stab, slice, gone! One by one, I took out each of the scorpions. I gathered a new item, scorpion tail, used to attack or intimidate enemies. Also, it can be used as a disguise. When all that was over, I continued making my bridge to get across the river. On day 79 to 85, I finally finished my bridge to cross the river. When I got to the other side, I found that the only way ahead was through a narrow ravine, but the entrance was guarded by two scorpions. Man, these guys are everywhere! While I could have attacked them, I remembered that I still had that scorpion tail in my belongings. I quickly put it on and approached them. La 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 la, just a disgusting scorpion out for a stroll. The guards didn't seem to mind and proceeded to let me through. Well, that was easy. While journeying, I wandered into an open field that looked pretty desert-like. Well, this is a weird place to put a desert. All of a sudden, I heard rumbling and could feel the ground shake. I knew right then what it was. Suddenly, the centipede bursted out of the ground, just like last time, and lunged toward me. It was time to take my revenge. Bring it on, leggy. That centipede was still fast and dangerous, but I was much more confident this time around. Oh, no, you don't. I even used the scorpion tail to make a couple of hits, but it broke in the middle of the fight. So much for disguising myself again in the future. Take that and that. Finally, I took out the potion again and used it for the finishing blows. I'm worthy enough this time. Prepare to be defeated. The potion worked, but the centipede was still quick. Furiously, I used everything I could to finally defeat it. Just then, I started feeling tingly. Ooh, I like this. I changed into a bigger and more powerful fire spider with even more hearts. All right now, Lizard King, prepare to meet your match. On days 86 to 90, I continued on my journey. I was feeling really confident until I realized I had just walked straight into quicksand. Oh, come on, who thinks of quicksand? Suddenly, I started thinking of ways to get out. All of a sudden, I could see Percy flying overhead. Percy, I'm glad you're here. I can see that. How can I help? Maybe you can pull me out, catch this chain and start flying. Good idea. Hit me. I threw the line towards Percy and began flying, pulling me out of the quicksand. Oh, that was close. Thanks, Percy. What are you doing here? I wanted to see how you were. You saved my life so many times before, and I guess I just wanted to repay you in some way. Well, you definitely did that. If it wasn't for you, I would be in a really sticky situation. It can get risky at times, wandering around out here on my own. You are definitely welcome, my friend. I will let the others know of your progress. Just before he left, Percy warned me about something he saw while flying overhead. 
Be careful. I saw what appeared to be a gang of bullfrogs coming in your direction. They must be heading to the palace of the Lizard King. Bullfrogs, you say? Those things will gobble spiders up in one bite. I'll be sure to look out for them. Thanks again, Percy. Take care. On days 91 to 94, I finally ran into the bullfrogs. Wow, those guys are big. I didn't know bullfrogs could get that big. For the most part, they didn't seem to notice me. That's until one of them apparently spotted me and started shooting his tongue at me. Yuck, I don't need you tasting me. He was strong though. He even took out a couple of my hearts. If I didn't make a move, I was going to be one toasted bug. I can't just keep fighting this guy forever. I knew I had to outmaneuver him, so I jumped into a tree and waited for him to get bored. Luckily, he didn't seem to be the smartest of creatures, even though he was so tough. Serves you right, I didn't come this far to become a spider snack. On days 95 to 97, I followed the bullfrogs to the Lizard King's palace. They might have been strong, but they weren't very smart. They led me right to where I needed to go. Wow, this is gonna be a lot. As I got closer to the gate, I spotted a message written on the palace roof. Subscribe! Oh yeah, that reminds me, be sure to subscribe and like this video for more content. I go on a lot of adventures and would love to have you follow me on them. I tried to get through the front gate when a horde of gecko soldiers started to attack. Out of my way, I got a king to fight. I smacked the heck out of them until finally they were all defeated. This guy really loved his amphibians. On day 98, I ran inside through the palace corridors to find the Lizard King. Wow, this place is pretty ornate for a lizard. Hey, that armor looks kind of familiar. Oh yeah, I almost forgot that I had an adventure as a knight. That was a journey. You guys should definitely go check it out when you are done with this one. Through different rooms, I would occasionally have to battle some of the gecko soldiers. Don't you guys have anything better to do? Despite looking all throughout the palace, I couldn't seem to find the Lizard King anywhere. I was getting disappointed and even losing a little bit of hope. I turned around and I could see what appeared to be the ghost of a long-legged spider. Daddy Longlegs? Is that you? Yes, Zozo, it is I. I told you that I would always be there to help you. Don't give up. You are so close to the end. You're right, Daddy Longlegs. I must continue. I'm scared, though. I'm just a fire spider, and I don't know if I'll defeat the Lizard King. You may be small, but you have the spirit of a giant spider inside of you, and it's time to let that spirit out. I'm going to grant you the power that made me so big. Something started to happen. Magic energy filled the room, and I felt myself changing once again. I transformed into a gigantic fire spider. I had so many hearts now. Thanks, Daddy Longlegs. On day 99, I finally landed in the throne room. The Lizard King sat on his throne with his big red eyes staring at me. Well, well, if it isn't the itsy bitsy fire spider who defeated my minions. Looks like you aren't so small now, but I bet you're still weak. Come to face me at last? I will do what I must. Then you will croak. Just then, he flipped a lever, and the bullfrogs I had seen earlier came in. Oh no, not these guys again! Then I remembered I still had the potion, and was about to use it when one of the frogs grabbed it with its tongue. Guess I'm gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. Using my wall-crawling abilities and spider jumps, I dodged attacks from the frogs and gave them some damage. It looked like my attacks were super-powered with fire strength now. Soon, all the frogs were defeated, though I could swear I missed one. Now it's just you and me, Lizard King. So be it. He charged toward me with lightning-fast speed, giving me strong blows that did cause some damage. You should not have fought against me, Spider. I am the Lizard King. Oh yeah? And how do you taste? What? Just then, the last frog I thought I missed shot his tongue out, grabbed the Lizard King by the tail, and sucked him into his mouth. No! I became hesitant because I didn't know how the frog was going to respond. Hey, you're that frog I fought with earlier. I'm sorry for hurting you. Truce? The frog just looked at me, then suddenly spat up the Lizard King's crown. He croaked, then proceeded to hop away. Well, I guess that means truce. On day 100, I returned to the base to see everyone there, waiting for me. I told them all about what happened with the Lizard King. Wow, I didn't even know frogs could eat lizards. Neither did I. Guess he learned something new every day. Zozo, I'm glad you've returned. Yeah, dude. The Lizard King is defeated. Now we're free. This would not have been possible without you, Zozo. Thank you, from all of us. Now we can go back to living our lives in peace. And now we have a new home for spiders of all walks of life. Then there came a commotion at the gate. Huh? What's going on over there? Suddenly, a loud croak could be heard. Frog! No wait, I think I know him. Turns out, it was the frog from earlier. Come by to say hello. I'm glad you could come by. Just one rule, no eating anybody. The frog agreed and I proceeded to introduce him to everyone. This had been quite the adventure. On day one, I spawned as an itty bitty fire Godzilla. This is rad! But wait, I've only got three hearts. What? That's not rad at all. But when I focus real hard, I can make little fires. Look, I just set that tree on fire. 
Uh-oh, it looks like I upset the baboons who were living there. They're coming after me. I better hightail it out of here. I ran off deep into the forest. Being a tiny baby fire Godzilla wasn't working out great for me so far. Maybe if I can get bigger and stronger, I can use my powers to help people, rather than just burn their houses down. That'll help me make some friends around here. Maybe that big, tough, warped Moscow will be my friend. Hey, I'm Zozo. I'm pretty new around here. Wanna hang out? Hey, hey, not so fast, buddy. You wanna hang out here? You gotta pay the toll. Empty your pockets, little fire Godzilla. But I don't have any money. Then I guess you better come with me, Zozo. If you can't pay, you gotta work. That was another bridge I'd already burned. I needed to run before the warped Moscow could get his big, buggy hands on me. I grabbed a few sticks from the forest and hid in a cave. These would make some pretty good torches with a little bit of my fire, so it won't be too dark in here. I proceeded to place down some torches before deciding to go to sleep for the night. I'm gonna need to get a lot stronger if I want to last out here. This place isn't kind to baby fire Godzillas like me. On day two, I woke up in the cave to find my torches had gone out overnight. It was so cold and dark. What if there are spiders in here? I should get moving. I left the cave and entered the forest to explore my surroundings. Wow, this forest is huge! So many trees, so much wood to burn. I needed to be careful in here or I'd set everything on fire. When I build my own base, it should probably be made out of stone. I needed to break down a couple of these trees and gather some sticks and wood to make a wooden pickaxe. Perfect, this will be great for mining stone. Now I needed to find a good place to build my base. Maybe somewhere around here? Wait, has somebody already built a cabin here? What's happening here? A druid rushed out of the cabin. Hey, hey, keep your distance, friendo. I just finished this place. I don't need you burning it down. I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to burn your cabin down. I just needed to find a place to make my base. Base? What? Are you one of Lochnar's guys? What? No, I'm Zozo. Who's Lochnar? He's a necromancer. He's trying to raise an army of the dead. He and his boys have been harassing people about money around here lately. The druid returned back into his cabin after bidding me farewell. Money? That sounds just like that warped Moscow from yesterday. He must have worked for this Lochnar guy. I better start mining for stone near the druid's cabin. He'd probably make a decent neighbor. By day three, I started gathering materials for my base. I used my wooden pickaxe to start mining stone in a cave next to the druid's place. Hope he doesn't mind a little construction noise. Hey, keep down that racket, Zozo. I'm reading. Now that I know there's a necromancer out there building an army of the dead, I should probably go pay attention to home security. First of all, I took the time to clear out an area and build a big stone wall. Yes. This should keep out that warped Moscow if he tries to hassle me for more money. And I won't be able to accidentally burn this wall down either. While I was at it, I needed to get myself a weapon. Maybe I could use some of my spare sticks and wood to make a wooden sword. Hopefully I don't burn it to a crisp. Now I'm looking well prepared. While I was making my way towards the druid's cabin, I noticed something crawling out of the forest. It looked like an elder skulk. Better take care of it before it gets too close to my base. Don't you know it's rude to trespass, Mr. Skulk? Let's go! Hiya! With this sword, the elder skulk was no match for me. After I hit it a few times, skillfully dodging its attempts to hit me back, it went scuttling off into the forest again. Nobody beats Fire Godzilla! And clearly that fight made a big difference because I was starting to get bigger and stronger. I had five hearts now and I could let out a terrifying Godzilla roar. On days four and five, I decided to go a little further into the forest to mine some more stone for my base. The wall was nice, but it wasn't exactly cozy. I needed a roof over my head. I already used some of my spare stone to make a stone pickaxe. But when I ventured out into the deep part of the woods, I ran into an old enemy, the warped Moscow. You really thought you could get away without paying the toll? You really have no idea who you're dealing with, kid. You don't want my boss to have a problem with you. Your boss? Is he a necromancer? <laughs> you're smarter than you look, Zozo. My boss, Lochnar the Necromancer, he's gonna come take over all this soon enough. And if you're not with him, you're against him. I'd never be the guy who wants to take over a forest by force. I may burn stuff down sometimes, but I'm still a good guy. Then I guess I've got to destroy you. The Moscow came at me so fast, I was knocked back off my feet. I pulled out my wooden sword and tried to parry all of his attacks. You can't hold me off forever, Zozo. But I was a little faster than he was. Even with my wooden sword, I was able to get the jump on the warped Moscow and defeat him. Looks like I can handle myself decently now. I should probably spend a little more time out of the forest, though. On day six to eight, I depleted my mine in the forest. At least I was able to find some iron ore though and craft myself a cool iron sword and an iron pickaxe. 
let's just see someone try to mess with me now. But after getting attacked by the Moscow, I wanted to get away from the forest for a while. I decided to take a trip up to the mountain and enjoy that clean mountain air. And I can't burn anything down up here either. It's perfect. But suddenly, a mountain troll approached me, and it seemed like he didn't want to share the mountain with anyone. This mountain isn't big enough for the both of us, even if you are the puniest fire godzilla I've ever seen. I'm just visiting, man. You don't need to be so mean about it. How dare you call me mean? I'm gonna crush you into dust for that. He was so big, and he started chasing me. My only advantage was that I was much faster than him, so I could keep my lead. That's where my iron pickaxe came through. With my iron pickaxe, I quickly mined a big hole in the ground, then carried on running. With my trap set, I decided to taunt the mountain troll by calling him a slowpoke. He ran up to me not looking down, until he fell into the hole and he couldn't climb back out. A uh, little help in here? I think you've earned yourself a time out, mountain troll. On days 9 and 10, I decided to travel further up into the mountain until I found a mountain cave hidden among the rocks. Maybe there will be some treasures hidden in here. Better take a look. I walked into the cave, iron sword at the ready, using the natural light of my fire to light the way. That's when I hit the jackpot. Gold ore deposits. Now that's what I'm talking about. I started to mine the gold, when suddenly, despite my fire, it started to get extremely cold inside of the cave. It sent a chill down my spine. Hello there, little creature. I turned, and that's when I saw him right there, staring at me. It was Lochnar the Necromancer. Somehow, I could feel the power coming off of him. It was time for me to even the score and use my Fire Godzilla roar. But Lochnar just laughed in response. <laughs> Be quiet, boy. Do you have any idea who you're dealing with? When my army walks the earth, every flame like yours will be snuffed out. I wasn't gonna take that sitting down. I ran at Lochnar with my iron sword and prepared to hit him. But with one strike from him, I was thrown back across the cave. Uh -oh. You're so weak. It's pathetic. You're not even worth destroying yet. Perhaps when you're a little stronger. And with a flash, Lochnar was gone, and I was left terrified. If even my fire Godzilla roar did nothing, what hope did I have against him? But it wasn't all bad. I noticed then that I still wasn't alone in the cave. There was a fire villager waiting in there too. When Lochnar was gone, he ran towards me. I can't believe you survived. Lochnar has been going after all of the flame creatures in the land. But why? What have we ever done to him? He's a necromancer. He's trying to raise an army of the undead. And everyone knows the weakness of the undead is fire. He needs to destroy us because we're the biggest threat to him. Then you're not safe here either. You better come back to my base so we can figure out a plan to stop this. On days 11 through 14, I started expanding my base to make room for my new fire villager friend. Just like me, he was perfectly suited to a fireproof stone house. I built rooms for him and me and another room where we could hang out together. But this took a lot of stone and I soon needed to leave the base and mine more. I returned to the mine near the druid's cabin and even though it was exhausted, it still contained some materials. While I was gathering more stone, I suddenly felt that cold feeling again. Oh no, does this mean the necromancer is behind me again? Not quite, Zozo. I'm merely one of his servants. He brought me back to life, so I will serve his every order, including destroying you! It was the Black Death, a plague doctor brought back from the dead. I drew my sword and prepared to battle, but by then, the Black Death was already on me. He hit me and took out some hearts. This guy was way more powerful than me. I ran further into the mine, hoping to find some kind of escape route, but the Black Death was gaining on me. I needed some kind of advantage. Wait, is that a chest? It was a chest. Maybe something in there can save me. I opened up the chest and found a fire aspect enchantment inside. This would give my sword flaming strikes. Perfect. I quickly used the anvil next to the chest to apply the enchantment to my sword. Take this, Black Death. Boom, that got him. The Black Death was set on fire and went running back out of the cave. Fire really does scare off the undead. Safe from the Black Death for now, I traveled back to my base and started making the wall even taller. But now, knowing just how effective fire was against the undead, I made some flaming torches to put on the wall. This should keep out any uninvited guests. On day 15, I went to check on the fire villager and make sure he was settling in nicely. I know from first-hand experience, it isn't easy to be a fire creature. 
I find it very comfortable in here, Zozo. Thank you. It's much nicer than having to stay in some damp old cave all day. So tell me, what's the deal with this Lochnar guy? Everyone's been telling me that he's trying to raise some kind of army of the undead. Who is he? Everything you've heard is true, but there's more. People say that Lochnar is over a thousand years old, and because he's already dead, he can't be destroyed. Centuries ago, he was defeated by a legendary hero and locked up in the swamp of vileness. But somehow, he came back again, and he's trying to finish what he started all those years ago, making an army of the undead so powerful that he'll rule the world forever. Can the legendary hero come back to defeat him? It sounds like we really need him right now. That was a long time ago, Zozo. The legendary hero is probably extremely old now, if he's even alive. No, if we want to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer, we need to find a new hero. Like who? Well, like you, Zozo. You survived an encounter with him and saved me back in the cave. No way. Have you seen me? I'm just a little fire Godzilla. The only reason I survived was because he said I was too weak to be worth destroying. I'd stand no chance against him in a real fight. Do you think I could survive a fight with Lochnar? I think I'd need to get a lot stronger first. On days 16 to 19, I started putting together a plan with the Fire Villager. If Lochnar is destroying fire creatures because he knows they're a threat to his undead army, we better gather up as many fire creatures as we can. Great idea, Zozo. If memory serves, Lochnar's undead minions were keeping a Blaze prisoner in an underground cavern near here. Then I guess I better go rescue him. After hours of searching the forest, I found a secret entrance to an underground area, sneakily hidden among some trees. Hopefully I'm not too late to help the blaze down there. I rushed through the entrance. I made my way into the insides of the underground cavern and took a look around, trying not to draw too much attention to myself. I saw a lava river running through the bottom of the cavern, so my fire wasn't too out of place here. Wait, are those wither skeletons? They were! A bunch of wither skeletons were scattered everywhere along the path leading deeper into the cavern. They must be guarding the prison cell where the blaze is. I ran in with my new fire aspect sword and started to fight them off as I went deeper and deeper into the cavern. After I took most of them, I unleashed my fire Godzilla roar. It scared some of the wither skeletons so bad, they ran off faster than their bones could shake. Clearly, all of this fighting was worth some pretty great XP because I grew to almost twice my size with almost twice the armor and twice the hearts. Maybe I can be strong enough to take on Lochnar with the right training. But first, I broke open the prison with my iron pickaxe and freed the blaze. Thanks for getting me out of there. It was really starting to get stuffy. Don't mention it, buddy. How did you get captured? Well, I was out here searching for the Kyther of Light when I got ambushed by all those skeletons. You were looking for what? The Kyther of Light. It's the weapon that the legendary hero used to defeat Lochnar all those years ago. It's said to be the most powerful weapon against the undead in the world. Oh, wow. Then I should probably start looking for it, too. Come back to my base. I want to know more. On days 20 to 22, Blaze and I returned to the base, only to see it being attacked by a horde of zombies. Even the torches I'd added to the walls didn't seem to scare them off. Lochnar was making some really tough undead for us to face. Thankfully, with Blaze at my side, the fight didn't last long. With his flames and my fire sword, we were able to take on the zombies and send them back from once they came. So long, you undead meanies. It feels so good to be free and fighting again. Glad you're back in the groove, Blaze. But while the zombies weren't too difficult to defeat, this incident did make me realize our base needed some better defense. Or at least something to scare off potential attackers. That's when I had a great idea for the statue. The perfect thing to keep the undead away. I started working on the base of the statue with excitement. This is sure to keep the mobs at bay once it's done. Can you tell what it's gonna be? And if you want more adventures like this, subscribe to Zozo, because believe me, the best is yet to come. With Blaze here at the base, I've still got to do one more thing, add a new room for him. With me, Blaze, and the Fire Villager all together, we're a fiery force to be reckoned with. On days 23 to 26, the base came under attack worse than ever before. I woke up to find the base surrounded by mutant skeletons, who were bigger, faster, and stronger than even wither skeletons. I ran out with my fire aspect sword and started attacking them, one by one. Each mutant skeleton took several hits with the sword to down. These guys were tougher than any grunt enemy I'd faced so far. A little help here, guys? Luckily for me, Blaze and the fire villager were there to help. With the three of us working together, we were able to drive off the remaining mutant skeletons back into the woods. That'll teach you to attack our base, skellies. Oh look, one of the mutant skeletons dropped a bow. Yes. That's perfect. I needed a good long range weapon for my arsenal. 
Hmm, what should I do next? Zozo! Yes, please? Now we've fought off the mutant skeletons, you should start exploring the deep dark woods for the Kyther of Light. We need it to defeat Lochnor the Necromancer. Good idea, Blaze. I journeyed out into the deepest, darkest part of the forest, knowing it would be the exact kind of place where Lochnor's minions would be waiting for me. And I was right, but I wasn't the only one. There was a fire elemental being surrounded by mutant zombies, the strongest zombies yet. Lucky for me, I had my new bow. I pulled it out, keeping a distance as I fired arrows at the mutant zombies. They seemed so shocked by my surprise attack, they retreated further into the dark of the forest. I'd saved the fire elemental. Want to come back to my base, little buddy? I'm collecting fire creatures. He seemed eager, so we headed back to the base. I built a new room to house the fire elemental, and built in a new base defense. Large holes dug into the ground around the base, so any stumbling zombies thinking of attacking would fall right in. I'm feeling safer already. On days 27 to 31, I started off by asking Blaze to tell me everything he knows about the Kyther of Light, seeing as it may be our best chance to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. It's an ancient weapon, Zozo, supposedly created by a powerful group of sorcerers, for if there was ever a great evil they needed to strike down. The legend goes that only someone pure of heart can wield the Kyther. To a being of evil, it's useless. But how can I find it? Even the most powerful weapon in the world is only useful if it's in our hands. Hmm. Perhaps the legendary hero would have hidden the Kaitha in the last place the undead would think to look. The Nether. Oh no, the Nether? That's one of the most dangerous places out there. I guess if it's the only place I can find the Kaitha, it's off to the Nether I go. With my sword and my bow, I set off for an old Nether portal in the woods. It's now or Nether. Yeah, bad joke, sorry. On the other side of the portal, it was all flames and lava. A fire Godzilla honestly looked kind of at home here. What didn't look at home was a huge, scary pigless, running straight towards me. You must be Zozo. I guess you're here looking for the Kyther of Light. Brave kid. And I guess you're here to find the Kyther too, before I can find it. You're a smart kid too, but I've got orders direct from Lochnar. Only one of us is leaving the Nether. Let's go. I tried to draw my bow, but the pigless was too fast for me. I was lucky enough to pull out my sword just in time to counter his attack. Before he knew it, I hit him back and eventually managed to hit him in a way that made him touch lava, and due to that he screamed a bit and moved away. You're tougher than you look, but I'll get you next time, you little twerp. And with that, he ran off into the depths of the nether. On days 32 to 35, I traveled deeper into the nether, leaving the waste and entering the crimson forest. Wow, this place is super scary. If the legendary hero really hid the Kyther here, he must have been one tough warrior. The Nether has some of the scariest mobs around, but I was surprised to see a familiar face amongst all the trees and lava. It was a baboon, just like the one I met on my first day here. Hey, aren't you the one who burned down my tree? I'm sorry, Mr. Baboon. It was an accident. I'm a fire Godzilla. Sometimes I burn stuff down. Whatever. It doesn't matter now. What are you doing in the Crimson Forest? I'm looking for the Kyther of Light to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. Wait, you too? He attacked my family with some zombies. I heard the Kyther might be hidden in the Soul Sand Desert. Let's travel together. We have better odds. Sounds good to me, Mr. Baboon. We traveled together to the Soul Sand Desert, which was every bit as bleak and barren as the name suggests. I then noticed Lochnar the Necromancer standing on top of a floating island. Hello again, Zozo, was it? Nothing about you was particularly memorable. You're all smug now, Lochnar, but you won't be when we find the Kyther and defeat you. You won't be able to find anything when you're dead. Suddenly, the ground below me and Mr. Baboon began to shake. I drew my bow and fired at Lochnar, but he didn't even flinch. It was useless. If we couldn't escape, we'd be done for. That's when I had an idea. I turned and fired my bow at one of the gas. That should get the attention of him and his ghastly friends. With Lochnar preoccupied with the gas, Mr. Baboon and I ran away, back towards the nether portal. That was some quick thinking back there, Zozo. You really saved our skins. I couldn't have done it without you. Come back to the base with me. You can join our anti-Lochnar squad. And with that, we exited the nether. On days 36 to 39, I returned back to the base with the Baboon. I built him a little treehouse because he didn't find the stone fortress as comfy as me and my fire creature friends. I gathered my new base mates together, the fire villager, Blaze, the fire elemental, and the baboon. I needed to hear their thoughts on my hunt for the Kyther. It wasn't in the nether waste, the crimson forest, or the soul sand desert. If the Kyther really is hidden in the nether, where could it be? You're telling me you didn't check the basalt deltas? The basalt deltas? What's that? 
It's the most dangerous place in the nether, Zozo. If the legendary hero really didn't want the Kyther to be found, that'd be the best place to hide it. The most dangerous place in the nether? I can't go there yet. The rest of the nether was already dangerous enough. If the Kyther was really in the basalt deltas, I needed to get stronger to get there. And I needed a little more inspiration. That's why I started working more on the statue. I must say, it's coming along quite nicely. From days 40 to 43, Blaze approached me, knowing I was feeling nervous about going back into the nether. Look, Zozo, the nether is a scary place. I know, I used to live there. But sometimes, when you can't fight your way through, you need to sneak. But Blaze, I can't sneak. I'm a fire Godzilla. I'm too easy to spot. I know, I know. But that's where my new plan comes in. There's a potion recipe hidden in a book I left in a lava canyon near here. If you can go get it for me, I'll make you a potion you'll find extremely useful. So that's exactly what I did. I found my way to the underground lava canyon. It was really hot down there, but thankfully, fire Godzillas don't mind the heat. There had to be a chest down there somewhere. If someone left a book down here on its own, it'd just burn up. But my thoughts were interrupted when suddenly, a huge serpent tried to grab me. It was a heck of a jump scare. I'm not on the menu, so slither on by, you reptile. I managed to hit it and knock it into the fiery depths below. That will teach you to mess with a fire Godzilla. As I continued to explore, I saw the chest tucked away in a corner. Let's take a look inside. A book, jackpot. I then proceeded to leave the lava canyon and make my way back to the base. I gave the book over to Blaze and he made me a potion. This right here is a potion of invisibility. It might make your journey into the basalt deltas a little less dangerous. Thanks Blaze, this is perfect. On days 40 to 49, I made my way back to the nether portal deep in the forest. Here goes nothing. After landing in the nether, I made my way through to the basalt deltas. My friends weren't kidding when they said this place was dangerous. It looks impossible to even build here. I took the potion of invisibility and started to sneak through. There were sheer cliffs everywhere. I had to be careful so that I didn't fall. Help me, please, someone help me. Oh no, is that an illager? What's he doing in here? And why is he surrounded by endermen? I can't just leave him like that. I need to help him, even if it means wasting my invisibility. Still keeping my distance, I pulled out my bow. I opened fire at the endermen, causing them to teleport away. Yes. That gave me a window to get the illager out of there. Come with me if you want to live. Me and the illager ran for the hills until we were out of the basalt delta and back in the much safer Soul Sand Valley. Thank you, kind stranger. You saved me. How can I ever repay you? You can tell me everything you know about the Kyther of Light. I need it to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. Wait, the Kyther of Light? That reminds me of an old poem I used to hear all the time when I was a kid. Who seeks the Kyther, brave and true, venture into the forest blue? The forest blue? Wait, that sounds like the warped forest. It's the only place in the nether I haven't checked. Come with me, we'll go find it. On days 50 to 53, me and my new friend the Illager made our way into the warped forest, one of the slightly nicer parts of the nether. I might have even enjoyed it if we weren't ambushed by that pigless I fought earlier. Hey, looky here. It's that dweeb, Zozo. Name calling? Really? That's just uncalled for, man. No, Zozo. What's uncalled for is you being here. Me and the rest of Lochnar's boys have already found the Kyther, and it's far away from here. You're gonna get destroyed in the nether for nothing. That's it. You're going down, pigless. But pigless pulled a dirty trick. He didn't go for me. He went straight for the Illager, taking him down immediately. No, you can't do that. I can do whatever I want. Let's tango, Zozo. We clashed again, but this time I was stronger than before. I dodged his attacks easily, and with a few well-placed strikes from my fire sword, Pigless was done for. With him gone, I was all alone in the nether again. Maybe Pigless had lied about them taking the Kyther. I had to explore and find out. There was a bastion remnant, an ancient ruined fortress nearby, and it seemed like the exact kind of place the legendary hero might have hidden the Kyther. Instead, all I found was a great beast, cowering in the shadows. Is the pigless gone? That guy dragged me along with him to help him find the Kyther. Most of the rest of our team was destroyed by nether mobs. It was horrible. It's okay, I defeated the pigless. You said he made you work for him. Do you have any idea where they may have taken the Kyther? Uh, tough to say. I think pigless mentioned something about taking it back to the camp. He probably meant the one in the wasteland, back outside the nether. Perfect, so at least I know where to look next. Let's get out of here. Wait, before you go, you deserve a reward for taking out that jerk pigless. I was gonna use it myself, but here, it's a knockback enchantment. Your strikes will knock back your enemies now. Oh, finally, some good luck. 
From days 54 to 57, I returned to my base and started making some adjustments. I added some guard towers so that we could spot any incoming threats faster. Just as I finished repairing and adding the knockback enchantment to my iron sword, the fire villager staying in the base approached me, looking very worried. Zozo, I need a hand. I've been looking into it, and I've seen that a mutant zombie is skulking out in the forest outside. You should probably go take care of it while I'm working on an extremely important potion. This would be the perfect opportunity to try my new knockback ability. Yes. I ran out into the forest, and just as the fire villager had told me, there was a mutant zombie making its way towards our base. I needed to put a stop to it. Come on, mutant zombie, you're no match for me. And I was right. With the knockback enchantment on my fire sword, I defeated it in no time and headed back to the base. Great work, Zozo. And here's your reward. I made a potion of slow falling. When you take it, it eliminates fall damage. You never know when that'll come in handy. On days 58 to 62, I continued work on the statue. I was really pleased with how it was coming along. Can you guess what it is yet? Suddenly, I heard the baboon yell out in panic from his treehouse. Guys, something is coming towards us. I looked out and saw a mob coming towards us. Creepers, courtesy of Lochnar the Necromancer. This is bad, this is really bad. But before we could do anything, the first wave of creepers had already hit. Several of them exploded, taking out huge chunks of the defensive wall, and others started crawling through the new gaps. I decided to rush in and finally get rid of the creeper menace. They started exploding again, taking out chunks of the base. By the time I managed to turn the tide of the fight, huge portions of our base had already been destroyed. When I had the advantage, the last surviving creeper ran off back into the forest. The fight was over for now. We need to start rebuilding immediately. Blaze, Fire Villager. Wait, where's Baboon? That's when we realized the Creepers had blown up Baboon's treehouse with Baboon inside of it. From days 63 to 66, hungry for fiery vengeance, I followed the last remaining Creeper back into the woods. You and your friends aren't going to get away with destroying Mr. Baboon. I chased him into the forest and saw him disappear down into an underground cavern. I was so angry, I didn't even think about how dangerous it could be to chase a creeper into an enclosed place. I hopped down into the cavern, but the creeper was nowhere to be seen. Instead, I found a book laying on the ground containing a secret note. Invade the base and destroy them all. Any survivors must return to the camp in the desert. G-O-A-W. G-O-A-W? Who's that? Wait, the camp in the desert. That's where they must be keeping the Kyther of Light. It was only then that I looked up and saw the creeper crawling quickly towards me. No time to think. On pure instinct, I pulled out my bow and fired. Boom! The creeper exploded, taking out a portion of the cavern. Lucky for me, thanks to the quick reflexes, I was out of the blast zone. From day 67 to 70, I traveled for two days all the way out to the desert. It was a really tough journey, but by the end, I finally saw the camp. Yes. It was a cabin surrounded by campfires, with a ghostly figure floating around it. It looked like the ghost of an ancient warrior. Lochnar the Necromancer must be able to raise skeletons, zombies, and ghosts. Wait, ghost of ancient warrior? That must be G-O-A-W, the one who wrote the note. He must be a pretty big deal. As I got close, I noticed there was a gorge in the desert just outside the camp. Better not fall in. I drew my bow and fired at the ghost, but predictably, the arrow went straight through him. That's when he threw through the air and lunged at me. He didn't even talk, he was all action. I managed to dodge and strike back with my sword, but he parried. This guy was a better fighter than anyone I'd ever faced. I didn't even know if I could defeat him. That's when I had an idea. If I'm not strong enough to beat him yet, I can still trick him. Before he could attack me again, I quickly drank my potion of slow falling. Then, when he attacked me again, I jumped back and fell into the gorge. To him, it looked like I fell to my doom, but thanks to the potion, I was just fine. When the ghost finally floated away, I climbed back up to the top. Kyther of Light, here I come! On days 71 to 74, I was finally able to make my way into the cabin being guarded by the ghost of the ancient warrior. Except, the Kyther wasn't there. The cabin was empty. All I heard was the echoing laughter of Lochnar the Necromancer. He was always a few steps ahead. Once again, it all been for nothing. I made the long trek back to my damaged base, empty-handed. On days 75 to 78, I came back to the base and noticed how damaged it really was. It was still heavily damaged from the creeper assault, and I needed to start the repairs immediately, so I did just that. I felt terrible knowing that now Mr. Baboon is gone, I didn't need to rebuild the treehouse. As I finished up the repairs, the fire villager approached me. Hey Zozo, I just wanted to say I'm sorry you didn't find the Kyther, but I know you're strong enough to beat Lochnar anyway. I figured this might help. 
That's when he handed me a diamond sword with fire aspect, the strongest weapon I'd ever had my hands on. Wow, thanks, Fire Villager. It may not be the Kyther of Light, but it's the next best thing. And it turns out that the diamond sword couldn't have come at a better time, because suddenly, the ghost of the ancient warrior had returned, and he was flying at me. Guess it's time for a rematch. But this time, I didn't need any cheap tricks to take him down. Using my new diamond sword, I dodged his blows and struck him again and again until he burst into ghost vapor and disappeared. I immediately started growing larger and larger, as well as doubling my hearts. But it wasn't just that. With my new size, I gained Godzilla strength, making all my close range attacks three times as powerful. Just then, the fire villager ran up to me. You did it, Zozo. You defeated the ghost of the ancient warrior. That's amazing. Wait, Zozo, I found this where the ghost vaporized. It looks like a notebook. The latest note read, Lochnar is nearly at his full power. The final arrangements are being put into place. Destroy Zozo and the Druid. Wait, the Druid from the cabin? He's involved in this too? On day 79 to 84, I knocked on the door of the Druid's cabin to find out how he was involved in all of this. Just like when I first met him, he wasn't eager to have me as a visitor. Keep your distance, Fire Godzilla. You're even bigger than last time, and my house is very flammable. I don't want to burn your house down, Druid, but I know someone who does. I've seen instructions from Lochnar the Necromancer. He wants to destroy me and you. What does he have against you? Ugh, Lochnar again? I thought I was done with that guy. What do you mean? I defeated him a few hundred years ago and sealed him away. I figured he'd stay gone for good, but I guess not. Wait, does that mean you're the legendary hero? I was, sure, but then I retired to become a druid. It's a much easier life. And besides, you should be fine. As long as you have the Kaithar, he won't be that hard to defeat. But he has the Kaithar. Oh, oh, okay. This could be bad. After our conversation, the druid led me back out into the forest to find another nether portal. He'd hid another weapon in the nether all those years ago as backup, if ever the Kaithar fell into the wrong hands. But when we arrived at the side of the portal, it had already been destroyed. This isn't good. If Lochnar destroyed the nether portal, it means he doesn't need it anymore. He's reaching the full height of his powers. What do we do now? Well, from where I'm standing, the only option is to- An arrow shot out of the woods, hitting the druid and destroying him before he could even finish his sentence. No, this can't be happening. I turned to see a small gang of skeletons emerge out of the thicket behind us. As they ran at me, I made short work of them with my diamond fire sword. But now, I was out of options and out of time. There was only one thing left to do. I need to find the Swamp of Vileness and destroy Lochnar myself. On days 85 to 89, I made my way out to the snowy landscapes of the north, where I finally found the great beast I'd met back in the nether. As far as I could tell, he would be the only one who could tell me where to find the Swamp of Vileness and finally track down Lochnar the Necromancer himself. I know where to find it, but it won't be easy. It's beyond the forest, but you can only go at night. And that's the thing, that creep is strongest at night. So if you're gonna take him on, you better be well defended. That's a useful tip. Thanks, Great Beast. From days 90 to 94, I decided to take the Great Beast's advice and armor up. I used my iron pickaxe to mine some diamonds and turned them into a full set of diamond armor, helmet, chest plate, leggings, and boots. But I didn't want to stop there. I needed some enchantments to really make sure I could take a punch from Lochnar and his evil army of the undead. I gave myself the protection enchantment. That makes my armor twice as durable against close range attacks and projectile protection, which kept me safe from ranged attacks. Let's see Lochnar take me on now. From days 95 to 97, I finally finished the statue. Its flame could be seen from miles away and should keep all the bad mobs away from my base once and for all. It was a beacon of hope for all fire mobs, a bright, brilliant beacon that could be seen from miles away. And that's when I realized why I had to take on Lochnar and his undead minions. I could either use my fire powers to destroy, like when I accidentally burned down Mr. Baboon's tree, or I could use it to be a beacon of hope, to fight back against evil whenever I can, because it's the right thing to do. So it's exactly what I was going to do. On day 98, I spoke to the fire villager in Blaze about my plan to attack the Swamp of Vileness and finally take down Lochnar. You can't do this alone, Zozo. You're strong, but Lochnar is so powerful, and he has an entire army. He's right, Zozo. Why don't you let us come with you? Surely we'll be stronger together. I can't put you at risk like that. You need to stay here as backup in case Lochnar defeats me and his undead army escapes. But I can't let that happen. Trust me, no matter what, 
I'm going to defeat Lochnar and put an end to his evil reign of terror. With that, I exited the base, but was suddenly stopped by someone I haven't met before. Uh, can I help you? He said nothing and dropped me a note and left. The note said, if you want to help me defeat Lochnar, you should subscribe to Zozo and check out our other adventures. You can even suggest what you want to see next down in the comments. Hmm, alright. I'm sure with the help of you guys, I'll actually manage to defeat Lochnar. On day 99, following the instructions of the Great Beast, I made my way to the Swamp of Vileness in the dead of night. It was every bit as creepy as I'd imagined. Mist hung low, the mossy skeletons, minions of Lochnar, were patrolling back and forth. I didn't have any more potions of invisibility, I needed to fight my way through. Okay, skellies, come get me. I want to speak to your manager. That got their attention. Suddenly, waves of mossy skeletons started running at me, while others fired bows at me from a distance. Thankfully, with my enchanted diamond armor, I could deflect most of the damage, and my enchanted diamond sword could destroy them in one strike each. But that wasn't the problem. The mossy skeletons may have been weak, but every single time I defeated them, more just kept coming out of the fog. Don't you guys know when to quit? They are the least of your worries, Sozo. It was Lochnar. I could hear his voice, but I couldn't see him. It was like he was everywhere around me. If you survive this onslaught, come a little further and meet me in my crypt. It will be the last thing you ever do. I wasn't going to let him get away with that. No matter how many skeletons he threw at me, I'd keep fighting to the very end. With my sword at the ready and my flames brighter than ever, I moved in towards the crypt of Lochnar. On day 100, I fought through the mossy skeletons and reached the crypt, which looked like a big, rickety pile of ancient stone. But there were stronger enemies waiting for me there. Mutant skeletons and mutant zombies came running at me, but my sword was ready. I hit them again and again, sending one after another down. But just like the mossy skeletons, more of them kept coming. I'm really starting to get sick of you guys. I unleashed a mighty Fire Godzilla roar that could be heard across all of the Swamp of Vileness and it knocked out all of the undead at once. It was just me in the crypt, so I pulled out my iron pickaxe and started destroying it, just to spite Lochnar. But just then, I fell down deeper into the crypt. Oh my gosh, there it is! That's the Kyther of Light! This is where he's been keeping it! I grabbed the Kyther. Now, I was ready to take on Lochnar! I wouldn't be so confident, Zozo. Boom! Lochnar appeared behind me, more powerful than he'd ever been before. Do you really think you can beat this? Lochnar began to grow as his power increased, becoming a huge, monstrous super necromancer. Like this, he really did look like he could take over the world. But I wasn't done yet. And do you really think you can beat this? I summoned up all of my power and channeled it. My flames got brighter as I grew, taking in the power of the Kyther of Light. I became Ultra Fire Godzilla, with 30 hearts and almost unbreakable armor. You can't do this. It isn't fair. Life isn't fair, Lochnar. Let's go. Lochnar threw everything at me, hitting me again and again, but getting nothing. Now it's my turn. With one mighty swing of the Kyther, with all my power behind it, Lochnar was destroyed once and for all, never to raise another undead minion again. Safe at last, I returned to the base to celebrate with the Fire Villager and Blaze. Things were finally looking up for all of us. On day one, I spawned in as a lava wither. Wow, I'm so little, and I only have four hearts. I can still hover in the air a bit though, and can I... Yes, I can throw flaming wither skulls. Awesome, they don't seem very powerful though. It looked like I was in a town of some sort. All of a sudden, I was attacked by some villagers. One of them threw shears at me. How rude, but I'm keeping the shears. Hey, I know I threw some wither skulls, but I didn't hit anyone. I wasn't doing anything to you. I hurried and flew away, slowly. I wasn't very fast yet. Man, that was mean, but I can't afford to fight right now. I found a little cave and managed to find a corner that seemed safe. Tomorrow, I'll gather some supplies. And with that, I fell asleep. On day two, I woke up feeling refreshed. I better get some supplies so I can build a shelter for myself. I actually liked the cave I was living in, so I decided to stay there. I chopped down some trees and as I hit them, I saw that the trees were catching on fire. Oh, whoops, Smokey the Bear is going to be so mad at me. I'd have to be careful about what I touched since it seemed like I was pretty hot, literally. I had enough wood to make some tools for myself though. They were simple, but they did the trick. Then I almost made myself a nice little nook in the cave, but the pickaxe broke. I went to craft some stone tools and while crafting, the crafting table sat on fire. Oh man, I'll have to figure out a solution to this. 
I noticed that my hunger bar was getting a little low, but I didn't really know what withers like to eat. I guess I would have to go out and try a few things. I flew around the forest and found some mushrooms and other berries. I tried them, but it seemed like withers didn't like mushrooms. Blech, looks like no fungi for this wither. I continued on and saw some animals. Maybe I would like some eggs or chicken. Sorry guys, I ate the raw chicken, but I didn't like that either, and it barely refilled my hunger bar. I explored some more, but it started to get dark, so I decided to head home for the night. I'll try looking for some other food tomorrow. Maybe a nice salad? On day three, I went looking around for some plants and grass. I went for the grass, but it only dropped seeds. Then I had the idea to use the shears on it, and voila, I got some dried grass. I decided to eat some dried grass, and finally it refilled my hunger a decent amount. Weird, but whatever does the trick, I guess. As I was eating, I thought I saw something moving behind a tree. Huh? Hello? I didn't hear anything, so I assumed I was alone. I kept eating my dry grass. I went exploring and realized that I was on an island. The water was so clear and beautiful, I wanted to touch it. I reached out, and it hurt me. Oh, I don't think I like water anymore. I mean, I'm literally made of lava, so it makes sense. I made sure to gather up some grass for later. I flew away from the shore. I decided to explore closer to the center of the island. There were lots of trees and bushes. There seemed to be a mountain in the middle of the island. Wait, no, it was a volcano. Oh, wow. I flew a little closer to the lower part of the volcano and realized there was some lava inside. Ooh, that feels nice. All of a sudden, some lava spewed up at me, hitting me out of the air. Ouch. I quickly flew away and headed back to my cave for the night. On days four to five, I left the cave to go exploring some more. I realized later that someone was following me. I wasn't sure what it was, but I could see it darting away when I wasn't looking. I decided to hide behind some rocks and then pop out at it. It came around the rock and I scared it. Ah! Ah! It was just a little butterfly. Hey, what are you doing following me? I'm not. Okay, sure. I kept going and waited again for the butterfly to come around the bend of a rock. You are following me. Admit it. Fine, I am. But I need your help. Huh? Me? What can I help with? You need to keep the island from exploding. Uh, what? The butterfly sighed and flew away anxiously. The island has been shaking and there have been small lava explosions. The town wise woman said that the island is going to be destroyed with a huge explosion. But it can be prevented by a hero. Me? The town summoned you and you came. But one villager and his family were opposed to the whole thing, and he's the one that attacked you. Rude. Right? Anyway, you're our only hope. Why me? Um, I assume it's because you're made of lava? That would make sense, but I have no idea how to do that. I need to talk to the village wise woman. Agreed. The butterfly, who called herself Vanessa, led the way. On day six to eight, we arrived back at the village. We saw a few people around, but not many. Those are the people who attacked you, Bruce and his son Bobby. Vanessa pointed out some villagers outside with some pitchforks. They were arguing with some of the other villagers. Here, I know how to get to the wise woman's house. Vanessa led me around the back of some houses when we arrived at a home with a bell hanging outside. Nice. I've been expecting you, young hero. I flipped around to see a wise old woman with a basket of various dry grass on the table next to her. I assume you are hungry. Yes, thank you. She welcomed us in and she made Vanessa some tea. You want to know how to defeat the volcano? <laughs> well, I don't even believe that I can. I'm so small. You can. You just have a few steps to take. She brought out what looked like an orb. I knew that the volcano would erupt someday. The villagers turned to me to help, and I gave them a solution, but some would not listen. They will seek you out to hurt you. They believe you are evil and have ill intent. Why would they think I'm evil? Some withers are, but that is a choice, young friend. You choose your path. And for the sake of our island, I hope you choose wisely. The orb suddenly started to glow, and I saw a figure inside. It looked like me, but bigger and stronger. You can gain the ability to control the lava and tame the volcano, but it will take time. You will need to complete tasks in order to become the hero we so desperately need. What do I need to do? Only you will be able to know. The volcano will speak to you. Huh? Speak to me? Interesting. It had gotten late, so the woman invited us to spend the night. On days 9 to 10, Vanessa and I woke up and went outside to collect some food from the old woman. Before we left, the wise woman said that in the vision, she also saw our struggles with setting things on fire. That's when she tossed out a cobblestone crafting table. Just what we need, thanks. Vanessa started to fly away. I need to take care of some things, but you should go see what Bobby, one of the villagers, is doing. I went ahead, and that's when I noticed a villager, who I assumed was Bobby, was outside among the other townsfolk. He looked angry. Then all of a sudden, he jabbed his pitchfork at an innocent villager. Defend them. Where did that voice come from? I decided to listen to it. Hey, leave them alone! I dashed over to help the villager and stop Bobby. Get back, you devil! We don't want you here! Bobby tried to stab at me, but I moved out of the way. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to save the island. Just please stop hurting people. Bobby looked surprised. You're not going to eat us? Ew, gross! I mean, no, why would I do that? Bobby looked shocked and he lowered his pitchfork. 
My father has been telling everyone that withers are evil and can never be trusted. They feed on the souls of men. Well, I definitely don't. I just like grass. Bobby seemed confused, but also relieved. He looked at me and nodded. I will follow you, Tiny Wither. I know that I had my doubts, but you seem like you really care about our people and our island. And I did. I knew they were just trying to make their way in the world like me. We could all live together in harmony. Just then, Bobby's father, Bruce, ran out of the house with a pitchfork. He ran towards me, but Bobby blocked him. Dad, don't hurt him. He's just trying to help. Get out of the way, boy. You don't know what you're talking about. Then Bruce jabbed his pitchfork at Bobby. Defend them. Hey, leave them alone. I spun towards Bruce, pushing him away. As I did, I threw one of my tiny little flaming wither skulls at him. It wasn't much, but it did a little bit of damage. It also gave him some wither effect. You see, he's an evil creature. He will only cause pain and misery wherever he goes. I am not evil. The only evil here is you. And with that, threw another flaming wither skull. It didn't take Bruce out, but it did bring him down. Stop him. Make sure he doesn't hurt our friend again. Bobby smiled at me and chained Bruce up, took his pitchforks, and took him off to the jail. I'll come for you, Wither. You won't succeed in your evil plan. Bobby came back over as Vanessa flew back as well. Thank you. Zozo. Zozo. Thank you, Zozo. You are a welcome friend. All of a sudden, I felt a power surge through me, and I leveled up into a slightly bigger Wither. I had more hearts, and my flaming Wither Skull seemed more powerful too. Then I heard the ethereal voice again. Well done, Zozo. I looked around, but I didn't see where it came from. Wow, neat. Vanessa flew around me and did a little happy dance? I don't know, but it looked fun. Wow, that was amazing. Thanks. Now let's see what my new Wither Skulls can do. I launched some skulls and saw that they did more damage than before. There was more room to grow, but this was definitely a good start. I felt amazing. I also felt a warmth in my heart. I think the voice I heard was the volcano calling to me. I defended the people, and it was happy. On days 11 to 12, Bobby helped me build a house in the village. Well, it was more like a nice cave in the side of a rock, since I would burn wood if I touched it. We figured that I should stay close. Vanessa flew in and saw that I was making a new home, and informed me that while she was gone before, she had decorated my old cave. Wow. And now that I was building a new place to live, she was sad I wouldn't be using her improvements. I told her not to worry, as I planned on bringing everything she had done in the old base to this new one. She seemed to like that and did her little happy dance. As I made my way to the cave, I noticed some spiders outside of it. They weren't too much of a threat, and I took them out easily. Easy peasy. I ate a bit of grass while looking at the new entrance of the cave, and one of the small spiders jumped up behind me and tried to bite me. I took it out with one hit. I went in and gathered my things, but before I could grab all of them, a huge spider dropped down from the ceiling. Aw, oh, gross! Who you call gross, you three-headed freak? Hey, that's not very nice. The spider lunged at me and I dodged around him. I was able to use my fireballs, but he kept getting hits in. I didn't think I could defeat him, but I managed to take him down. Phew, that was close. I guess I wasn't as strong as I thought. I still had a long ways to go before confronting the volcano. I gathered the rest of my things and headed back to the village. On days 13 to 15, I made my way back to my new cave. On the way, I noticed a small alcove and decided to mine out some materials. I found some cobblestone, iron, clay, blackstone, diorite, and of course, some flowers. Perfect, I can make these into better tools and armor. I can also use them to upgrade my base. I made my way back to the village with my new materials, excited about what I had found. When I got back, some of the houses were on fire. Vanessa flew up to me. Zozo, the volcano erupted. It was just a small one, but some fireballs fell down from the sky and burned up some houses. I looked around and knew I needed to help. Bobby threw an empty bucket at me, and I hurried to the ocean to help take out the fire with the water bucket. Since I wasn't touching the water directly, I was fine and didn't get hurt. I asked Bobby to come with me, and we mined out some more stone. We needed to fireproof the houses, just in case. We helped the villagers make some improvements to their homes so they wouldn't catch fire again. It was hard work, but we all felt a little safer afterwards. Except I didn't get why the volcano was telling me to do things and then attacking people. There had to be some sort of explanation. While I thought about that, I decided to finish up my cave home by adding all of the things I had gotten from my old base. I also used some of the materials I had mined earlier. And last of all, I smelted down the iron so that I could craft some better tools and armor. On day 16 to 19, I woke up to the voice again. Be strong for them. I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I needed to find out. I went to the wise woman again and told her that the volcano had spoken to me. I also told her I didn't understand why it would attack the villagers. To answer that question, you must talk to Bruce. Bruce? The guy that tried to hurt me? Precisely. I didn't understand why, but I'm sure I would figure it out. Subscribe. Subscribe? Well, I guess if the volcano said it, then it's pretty important. I made my way out of the house into the jail cell where Bruce was being kept. I need to talk to you, Bruce. Never. <laughs> he spit at me. Why do you hate me so much? He ignored me. I guess I could try again later. I headed out and went to find Bobby and Vanessa. I told them all about the volcano speaking to me and about Bruce. Bobby didn't seem surprised. 
My dad doesn't really talk that much. It would take a miracle to find out what he knows. Great, off to a strong start. I got back to my cave and made some better upgrades to my house. I even built Vanessa a little nook to stay in. She seemed to really like it. Thanks, Seza. You're awesome. She really did know how to put a smile on my faces. On days 20 to 22, I woke up with that same voice in my head. Be strong for them. Huh? Can you at least tell me how? Silence. Great. I got up and decided to go out to the beachfront to look for some things and gather supplies. It was beautiful, but I had learned my lesson about water. Just then, a huge crab came out and tried to snatch me. Luckily, I was made of lava and I burnt him. Ouch, that's rude. I wanted to eat you. Trust me, you don't want to eat me. The crab looked at me, confused. You're not a shrimp with three heads? No, I'm a lava wither. Zozo, to be exact. A lava wither? Haven't seen one of those since the last one was summoned. Wait, there was another one? Huh? When? The crab clicked his claws for a minute and thought. Probably like 40 years ago. Something like that. That was a small thing then. This was new information. Thanks, you've been a big help. I would say thanks to you, but you're not a shrimp, so I'm even hungrier. And with that, the crab skittered away. What a weird guy. We had almost forgotten why we came to the beach, but then remembered and picked up some more sand. On days 23 to 26, I headed back to the village and started smelting the sand. Vanessa and Bobby came to say good morning. I told Bobby and Vanessa about what I learned from the crab. Another wither was summoned? I wonder why nobody ever mentioned it. Yeah, I wonder. Hmm. I decided to talk to the wise woman again. She would have been around then, so she must know something. I confronted her and she sighed. I had hoped that Bruce would have told you, but I suppose I must. She grabbed her orb again and I saw images flash across it. About 40 years ago, two young men in the village decided to play with magic. They had read about withers and decided that they wanted to summon one. They grabbed the items required from a weird magical room. They went about it correctly, but there are always risks. Once the wither was summoned, using magma blocks and wither skulls, it befriended the two young men. They kept it secret for a long time, but the wither wanted to be free. The boys promised that they would let him go, but they never did. The wither grew bitter and despised humans, especially the ones who had summoned him. One day, he managed to break free from its bonds. There was an argument between the three, but the wither had had enough. He attacked the village and the two young men. Let me guess. Bruce was one of those young men. The other died trying to save Bruce's life. His name was Marcus. So what happened to the wither? It laid the village to ruins, destroying most, and then escaped, taking captivity in the volcano. It grew over time and now inhabits it. It seeks revenge on all humans, but it's been biding its time. So it's not the volcano that is attacking people. It's the wither living inside. The old woman nodded. But the spirit of the volcano has been battling with it for many years. It has grown weak, nearly on the brink of collapse. That is why we need you, Zozo. You must restore the volcano and defeat the wither corrupting it. That was a lot to process. This wither had been growing for over 40 years. How could a small wither like me stand against something so powerful? On days 27 to 31, I woke up and knew where I needed to go. I went to Bruce and told him what I had learned. He looked tired today, not as angry. I know what I did was wrong. I messed with power that I had no right to use. I wanted something special, and I treated it like garbage. It's all my fault that this is happening, but I can't fix it. He seemed so sad, but I knew what I needed to say. That's why I'm here. I will protect you, all of you. Bruce looked at me and he smiled. I owe you my life, Zozo. Thank you. I unlocked the gate and let Bruce out of the jail. He couldn't embrace me, so he bowed a little bit instead. I will follow you, little wither. You are our strength. Just then, I felt another surge of power, and I leveled up into a bigger wither. I was now adult size. I felt that calm again, and then I heard the voice. Well done, Zozo. I was on the right path. Now, I just needed to prepare. On days 32 to 35, I tested out my new abilities. I could shoot bigger fireballs and could even fly faster. Bobby heard the explosion and came to take a look at what was happening. He was impressed. Bobby gave some materials and helped to set up an obstacle course with some targets to train with. We had to keep some water on hand though, so I wouldn't burn up all the trees. Careful, Zozo. I'm trying. I just have no idea what to expect. I'll be fighting another wither, and I'm not even sure what tricks he has up his sleeve. Just then, I saw Bruce. He came over and decided to help me out too. He showed me how to do the crawling exercise. I was too big for it, so I just flew over the obstacle. Bruce was not impressed. He then showed me how to aim my shots with some target practice. I think I'm getting the hang of it. I had hit the target, but Bruce suddenly drew his bow at me. He started shooting, and I successfully dodged some arrows, but some hit me. When he stopped, he told me he was trying to teach me how to dodge. You could have given me a heads up first, but hey, thanks for your help. 
No problem, Zozo. Anything for you. Anything? Um, within reason. Good to know. He smiled and we all headed back to the village for some food. When we got there, there was a commotion at the center square. What's going on? A small eruption came up out of the ground and swallowed a house. We looked and indeed, there was a large spot where the house should have been. Instead, there was a pool of lava. Was anyone inside? No, thank goodness, but it's not safe here. The villagers all argued until Bruce hushed them. We will take care of this. We will fortify the village and take precautions. The villagers seemed a little at ease, but still scared. I was going to give it my all to protect these people. I just needed to know what to do next. On days 36 to 39, I waited for the voice of the volcano to guide me. There wasn't anything, and I felt a little bit frustrated. Why aren't you talking to me? Nothing. I decided that I would just wait, patiently, or at least try to. Bruce and I helped to further fortify the village. He threw us some materials, and we made some cobblestone walls. As we were doing so, Bruce brought up another idea. Hey, Zozo, we want to build a statue in your honor. Also, as a reminder of hope, do you have anything in mind? I thought for a minute and then told Bruce what I would like. He smiled. That sounds perfect. We gathered the needed supplies and started to clear a spot for the statue. We built part of the base and hoped to get it all done in a few days. Can you tell what it is? On days 40 to 43, we went out to explore the island. I guess I had some other things I needed to do before the volcano would speak to me again. We went looking around the volcano when something caught my eye. It was a large cave. I went in and saw that there were some diamonds. I quickly mined them all up along with some other materials. With this, I can make some diamond armor. Neat! I noticed some lava running through a part of the tunnel and wondered if that's how the houses were being swallowed up. I tried to create some barriers just in case. It felt so nice and warm, I decided to take a break and enjoy the lava. Just then, I felt something grab me from behind. I managed to squirm around and saw a giant squid was dragging me into the water. I wasn't burning him because his tentacles were wet, so I was helpless. Oh no! He swam into the water, pulling me with him. When I touched the water, I solidified and was basically useless. I tried to gargle to make him stop, but he kept swimming further and further down. I saw my hearts dropping and thought this was the end. Just then, the squid released me into an alcove. Out of the water, I transformed back into a lava wither. My warm heart was enough to melt the stone back into lava. Hey, there you go, friend. I have saved you. Huh? Saved me? You almost destroyed me. The squid looked confused. Wait, you're not Lily. No, who's Lily? My daughter. Huh? I looked around and saw some axolotls coming up to me. That's not her, Paul. You need to stop snatching people. I looked at the axolotl and she looked at me. There was absolutely no resemblance. Sorry about Paul. He is Lily's friend and she disappeared a few days ago. We think she might have been kidnapped by the other clan of axolotls. They live nearby, but their keep is protected by a shark. Well, it sounds like you need help. I'll go look for her and bring her back to you. Really? Wow, that is so kind of you. Here, you will probably need this. The axolotl gave me a diving suit. I guess that solved the problem of me not being able to go into the water. Off onto another adventure. On days 44 to 49, Paul guided us close to the rival axolotl clan. He suddenly stopped and told us he saw the blue axolotl somewhere around here one time, but not sure exactly where. We thanked him anyway. I was close to the surface and took a look to see where I was. I recognized the area. I was next to the dry grass field. This was a great opportunity to use the diamonds I got, so I crafted a diamond sword, pickaxe, and shovel. That's when the crafting table caught on fire. Ah, not this again. The bench broke before we could craft all of the diamonds. Darn it. Well, at least I got some tools. Better than nothing, I guess. That's when I noticed a nice looking lagoon. Inside of it, I spotted a cave. It seemed empty, so I made my way underwater to take a look. Inside the cave, I thought I could see the axolotls hiding in there. Just then, I was attacked by a shark. Hey, I'm just trying to save Lily. The shark didn't respond. He kept attacking me. Luckily, I had crafted a new sword, so I was able to take him out pretty quickly. I swam up to the cave and emerged from the water onto a dry area. The axolotls looked terrified of me. I just want to take Lily back home. One larger blue axolotl moved forward. Lily is where she belongs. She loves me and wants to stay here. I didn't see Lily anywhere, so I really didn't trust this guy. Then I heard a voice. Help! I'm in here! That must have been Lily. Her own choice, huh? The blue axolotl jumped at me and attacked. The other axolotls backed away, clearly frightened. I was able to take down the leader quickly, and the other axolotls thanked me. Thank you, stranger. We've been captive to Blake for far too long. He wouldn't let us out and he kidnapped Lily as a way to start a war with the pink axolotls. Why? He was obsessed with Lily for months and wanted to marry her, but she said no. Then a few days ago, he captured her. Well, you're all safe now. 
I went around the corner and found Lily trapped in a cave. I freed her and we all left the lagoon. I knew what I had to do. On days 50 to 53, I went back to the alcove of the pink axolotls with the blue axolotls and explained the situation. They made a truce and Lily's mom was more than happy to have her daughter home. We owe you a great debt, Zozo. Take this as a token of our gratitude. Then Lily's mom gave me a huge stash of diamonds. Wow. wow, thank you. Of course, if what I heard is true, you are embarking on a great quest to save our island. You will need it more than we do. I thanked them again and then started the long journey back home. On days 54 to 57, I heard the voice of the volcano speak to me. Sacrifice for them. Sacrifice? Huh? I could do that. I just needed to figure out how. I quickly made myself an armor stand and hung my diving suit up. As I got to town, I noticed that the wise woman was outside looking at the sky. Huh? Welcome back, Zozo. You have been gone for a long while. I got mistaken for an axolotl and ended up saving the kidnapped daughter and joining the clans together. Hmm, yes, as I expected. I looked at her. She was still looking at the sky. She was an odd one, she was. Another two houses have collapsed while you've been gone. We did our best, but the wither grows angry. He is nearly on the brink of taking over the volcano. I was really worried. Maybe the villagers could leave the island and find refuge somewhere else. I suggested it to the wise woman. We don't run away from our problems, Sozo. Not run away, just stay somewhere else. We are safer here with you. I turned and saw Bruce and Bobby approaching me. Are you sure? Yes, young friend. All will be well soon enough. We all looked at the sky together for a minute. Then Bobby leaned over and whispered to me. What are we looking at? We slowly backed away as the wise woman continued to look at the sky. We went and gathered some more supplies so we could continue to work on the statue. It was basically done. We just needed a few finishing touches. We also built some new houses and made sure that the foundations were solid. We also built them over the water in hopes that the other wither would be less likely to attack them. The wither would try to take us down, but we would prevail. On days 58 to 62, I woke up to Vanessa flying around nervously. What's wrong, Vanessa? I think there's a storm coming, Zozo. Look! I looked outside and sure enough, it started to rain. I guess I could try to walk around in my diving suit, but it would definitely make me slower. I don't think I should go outside. I can't either. One raindrop could really hurt me badly. I hadn't thought about that, but it made sense that Vanessa was pretty fragile. Her wings were paper thin. It's okay though, we can have a day in. We can play a game. Vanessa flew around me excitedly. We ended up playing some games and she shared stories of her family. Where are they now? I'm not sure exactly. They all migrated when I was still little. My wing was hurt, so I couldn't go with them. That made me really sad. So they abandoned you? Vanessa landed. Her wings drooped a little bit. It's okay, Vanessa. I won't abandon you. I promise. Her wings lifted a little bit and she fluttered around again. Thanks, Zozo. You're a good friend. Sacrifice for them. I sighed. I'm trying. Bobby and Bruce eventually came over looking for us. We explained the situation and they helped build a little overhang so we could travel to and from the village safely. I was really grateful and made some food for everyone. A little while later, I took the diamonds I had been given and made myself some nicer armor. Wow, this stuff was amazing. I could take on anything with this. On day 63 to 66, I went out to go test my new armor. I went out to the jungle area where I hadn't been before. Maybe I could find some more food items. I was getting a little bit low on dried grass and only had five peas left. Vanessa had told me about something called chocolate and it didn't sound half bad. I would go looking for some cocoa beans. I was foraging through the trees when I entered a clearing. It looked like there was something written in the ground. Huh? It was that thing that the volcano had said to me. Be sure to listen to that little voice in your head telling you to subscribe. I started gathering some dried grass when all of a sudden I heard some loud screaming. I didn't see anyone around me, but then I realized it was coming from the sky. The volcano was spewing fireballs. I hurried and dodged around them, but one hit me. It was small, but it was enough to knock me over. Apparently these fireballs are extremely hot since they set me on fire. What is this magic? I'm not supposed to burn. Another fireball hit me. <laughs> Ouch, stop that. What's the matter? Can't take a little heat? I looked around but didn't see anyone. It sounded like the voice of the volcano, but much harsher. Hello? Small little wither, you are nothing, but I can make you great. I assumed it was the wither inhabiting the volcano. I'm not listening to you. Why not? We are, after all, brothers. I'm not your brother. You are a bully, preying on the innocent. Innocent? They captured me. They kept me as a pet. I knew I was destined for more. I had my revenge with the power I possessed, but I am so much more now. The time will come when I obtain all the power of the volcano, and then I will truly have my revenge. What they did was wrong, but they're sorry. You don't need to blow up the entire island because you're mad. The voice screamed and fireballs rained down around me. 
I tried to dodge, but I couldn't handle all of it. A fireball hit me and everything went black. On days 67 to 70, I woke up in darkness. After a minute, my body lit up the space and I realized I was buried. Uh -oh. oh great, now I have to dig my way out. I started using my tools to chip away at the hardened lava. It took a few minutes, but I was finally able to free myself. The clearing I had been in was now just a large pool of lava. Good thing I was made of the stuff, otherwise I would have been trapped. I flew over the hot magma and started to make my way back to the village. If the wither had thrown this big of a tantrum here, I'm sure he did some damage to the village. When I arrived, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I realized the wither must have used up all his strength trying to hurt me. I was relieved. Just then, I saw Bobby running up to meet me. Zozo, come quick! Huh? I followed after him into his house. What's wrong? It's my dad. I can't find him anywhere. I thought for a minute, then something dawned on me. He must have gone to talk with the wither and the volcano. That's the only thing I can think of. Bobby looked sick to his stomach. He doesn't need to do that. He probably feels responsible, but don't worry, Bobby. I'll go find him. I hurried and flew back to my cave to gather some supplies. On my way out, I noticed Bobby was waiting for me with a pack on his back. I'm coming with you. It's too dangerous, Bobby. It's my dad. I have to do something. He was right. I wouldn't want to stay behind either. He will probably go back to where it all started, on the desolate side of the island. Then that's where we'll go. On day 71 to 74, we went tromping through the island slowly. Bobby couldn't fly like me, but I wanted to keep a low profile anyways. We mostly traveled in the jungle and gathered food as we went. Hey, more cocoa beans! I totally forgot to make chocolate when I was in the village. I'll have to do that when I get back. Sacrifice for them. Huh? Sacrifice what? The cocoa beans? I think the volcano was losing it. We kept traveling and came upon a small pond. We made a small shelter and decided to stay there for the night. Bobby couldn't really sleep because he was so worried about his dad. It's okay, Bobby. We'll find him. I sure hope so. It was quiet for a while, but then out of nowhere came some more spiders. Ah, gross! Bobby helped me fight them off, and in no time, they were all gone. Now I really won't be able to sleep. I'll keep watch. Don't worry. Bobby nodded and then managed to eventually fall asleep. I hoped I could keep my promise to him. He really needed his dad, and I didn't want to see him lose him. On day 75 to 78, we kept trekking through the jungle. I could tell that Bobby was really tired, but he kept pushing through. We came to a large cliffside and realized that we needed to climb up it. We started to ascend, but then the island started to shake. Zozo! The island kept shaking, and then suddenly the cliffside split. Bobby fell halfway into the cliff and managed to hold onto a ledge. I looked down and noticed Bobby was barely holding on. I went to grab him, but remembered I would burn him. Uh -oh. Zozo, move! I maneuvered around them and managed to get to the ledge. Then I mined some blocks and created a safe path for Bobby to get back to safety. Wow, that was intense. You're telling me. We waited for a minute, just in case there was another earthquake. I hope the villagers are okay. I'm sure it's fine. I wasn't too sure, but I had to be hopeful. I need a break and some water. I nodded and let him rest for a bit. We decided to make camp and I made a small shelter. We set up a fire and Bobby was able to fall asleep right away. Having a near-death experience will do that to you. On day 79 to 84, we trekked further down the side of the volcano. We finally made it to the bottom and just as expected, there was a barren wasteland. Everything was dried up and dusty. Bobby looked around in awe. This is... Empty? Sad. I nodded in agreement. So much destruction and pain. It needed to be healed and restored to the way it once was. We started to make our way through, but then Bobby was attacked by some snakes. Ouch! He stabbed them with his pitchfork, but more were getting bites in. Hey, stop it! I threw fireballs at them and managed to take them out, but Bobby looked pretty bad. You okay, buddy? I think I've been poisoned. I need some medicine. It's in my bag. He managed to grab some and take it. The wilderness is not kind to you, my friend. Bobby laughed. No, it is not. After this, I'm never leaving home again. His laugh got quiet. I wonder how my dad is doing with all of this. You're weak. I'll go get you some food. Where? I looked around. Touché. Instead, I located a large dead branch and severed part of it off. I gave it to Bobby to use as a crutch. Thanks. We slowly but surely made our way further into the wasteland. On days 85 to 89, Bobby and I arrived at what looked like the remnants of the village. Some of the stones were still there, but there wasn't much. This must be it. My dad has got to be close by. Bobby threw down his crutch and went scrambling around the ruins. I went looking around but didn't see much. Then I noticed something shining across the land. Huh? I flew toward it and saw a metal-looking container buried in the ground. I unearthed it and discovered it was a cage. Bobby came up beside me. Is that... It's where I kept it. Huh? We both flipped around to see Bruce emerging from a small hole in the ground. 
It was partially hidden by a rock, which is why we didn't notice it in the first place. Bruce approached us and touched the side of the cage. It's where I kept Aiden, the other wither. Bruce seemed really upset, and he started to cry. I've made so many mistakes. All of this is my fault. I need to fix what I broke. Not like this, Dad. Don't sacrifice yourself. You only give him what he wants. Bruce didn't say much else, but we followed him into a small cave. We stayed there for a while to rest up while I devised a plan. On days 90 to 94, I woke up to Bobby yelling at Bruce. Huh? It's not your responsibility. Yes, it is. Don't try to stop me, Bobby. I'm doing this for you. For all of you. What about Zozo? He promised he would help us, and he will. I can't let someone innocent pay for my mistakes. Not anymore. Sacrifice for them. I knew what I needed to do. Bruce went back to his room in a huff, and I came up to Bobby. I know what I have to do. Just promise that you won't follow me, and make sure your dad stays here. Is this goodbye, Zozo? No, I'll be back. Don't you worry. Bobby nodded, and then went up to the opening of his dad's room. We lured Bruce towards the cage, telling him that we found something interesting in there. When Bruce wasn't looking, we pulled him inside the cage and locked the door. He looked stunned. This is for your own good, Bruce. Don't follow me. He sat there and begged me. Please, Zozo. It's okay, Bruce. It's what I'm supposed to do. On days 95 to 97, I continued flying toward the volcano. It spewed lava here and there, but I dodged past it. When I was a good distance away, I stopped and hovered. Aiden, I've come to talk to you. The voice I heard before let out an ugly scream and spewed more lava at me. You dare to call me what that monster named me? I'm here to take his place, Aiden. I know you hate him, but he needs to live. Take me instead. I saw the lava spew out further, almost hitting me. Why would you sacrifice yourself for such measly humans? Because it's the right thing to do. The voice laughed. <laughs> oh, this will be fun. I moved closer to the volcano to see if I could spot Aiden. Suddenly, the volcano reached out and snatched me, pulling me into its burning embrace. Everything went black. On day 98, I woke up inside the lava. I heard the voice of the volcano. Well done, Susan. I felt a powerful surge run through me, and I burst from the ground into the air. I leveled up into a full-sized wither. But then I felt a different kind of power. It was much bigger and stronger than me. I realized I could control the volcano. I focused my energy and forced Aiden to fly out. He was out of the volcano, but the fight wasn't over. He was as big as I was, probably stronger. But what choice did I have? I flew toward him, spewing lava and shooting witherheads. He fired witherheads back at me, but at long last, one of my wither skulls knocked Aiden down. On day 99, I approached Aiden. He looked like a normal wither like me, but he shook with anger. How dare you! That was my home! You have no right to use all that power for evil. This ends here, Aiden. I commanded the lava to burst up and around him and solidify to his body, caging him in. He was stuck, and he knew it. Let me go! I have to make them pay! They're all evil and can't change. They don't deserve to live. You're wrong, Aiden. And with that, I slashed at Aiden and defeated him. Thank you, my friend. You have proven yourself worthy of my power. The volcano spoke to my mind, and I felt a stronger connection with it. Wow. I was now its guardian. If I stayed worthy of it, it felt right. On day 100, I freed Bruce and told him the good news. He followed me and Bobby back to the village, where we all lived happily and safely. The people celebrated, and I finally made some chocolate chip cookies. We also finished the last part of the statue, and it looked awesome. Everything was right on the island, finally. On day one, I spawned into the Badlands as a slippery, fiery fire eel. I'm one spicy unagi, but I wouldn't be very filling. I'm only a baby eel, but I'm sure I could still pack a fiery punch. I breathed a jet of fire, one of my awesome fire eel starter powers. I was feeling super confident about what the next 100 days could hold. But my confidence didn't last for long, because a huge dread beast came running across the Badlands towards me. There was no way he was up to anything good. Still, I tried my best to be polite. Hey there, dread beast. I'm Zozo. It's nice to meet you. What a lovely day we're having, right? Yes, a lovely day. Even lovelier now that I've found you, a delicious fire eel. Wait, what? What do you mean delicious? I am the all-devouring dread beast, Zozo. All that matters to me is finding and eating tasty things, because I'm always hungry. Oh no. And don't even think about slithering away, little eel. I love fast food. 
when I slithered away anyway, going as fast as I could. There was no way I was going to be devoured by a dread beast on my very first day in the overworld. But I don't think that nasty dread beast is gonna quit either. I need to get strong enough to beat that monster, or I worry I'm gonna spend a hundred days preparing to become its lunch. On day two, I kept slithering until I finally found a place in the Badlands to stop and catch my breath. It's not exactly the most hospitable place to spawn. Then again, given that I'm a fire eel, it's probably better than spawning some more cold. And hey, at least I have 10 hearts. I realized that all that talk about eating me had, weirdly, made me kind of hungry. These will make for a perfect snack. I busted down the tree and started eating those delicious crunchy apples, feeling my hunger bar replenish. That's when I felt something that a fire eel should never want to feel, the cold. I turned and saw that it was because a ghost was floating right behind me. Give in, Zozo. To be devoured by the mighty dread beast is your destiny. What? You don't even have anything to do with that. You're just some random ghost. Why would you want the dread beast to eat me? <laughs> You're so foolish, Zozo. I have everything to do with it. I was a villager once, and then the dread beast ate me. I came back as a ghost, forever enslaved to his will. That's terrifying. I'm sorry, Mr. Ghost, but there's no way I'm letting that happen to me. I turned and ran for my life in the opposite direction. That spooky ghost and his master slash eater had already freaked me out enough for one day. When I came to a stop, alone in the middle of the Badlands, I was exhausted and honestly felt like crying. That's when I was approached by a surprisingly friendly Gorgon. Hey, little buddy, you look sad. I'm Grace, Grace the Gorgon. Why don't you come with me? I can help you out. That, that sounds nice. Thank you, I've had a really hard day. Oh, don't I know it. Come with me. I'll take you to a friend of mine's place. You'll be safe there. On day three, Grace the Gorgon and I traveled through the Badlands until we found a small shack with a troll waiting outside. But rather than posting mean comments on the internet, he seemed happy to see us. Grace the Gorgon hung back while I approached to get acquainted with the cheerful troll. The name's Terry. Terry the Troll. You look like you've seen a ghost, fella. I have seen a ghost, actually. And it was the ghost of one of the past victims of a giant monster that wants to eat me. Whoa, that's heavy, man. A monster wants to eat you. That sounds like something the Dread Beast would do. Yes, the Dread Beast. That's the one. Is there anything I could do to stop that awful monster from eating me? Isn't it obvious? You're gonna need to slay it. Get it before it gets you. You get me? Slay the Dread Beast? That doesn't sound like it's gonna be easy. Sure, it won't be easy, but is anything worth doing ever easy? Get out there, make a base, get some allies who'll work with you. It'll be tough, and it'll take time, but the way I see it, little fire eel, it's the only way you're gonna get out of this. Well, an eel's gotta do what an eel's gotta do. Thanks for the advice, Terry. I'm gonna try my best to get strong enough and make enough allies to defeat the Dread Beast. From day four to day five, Grace the Gorgon and I went deeper into the Badlands until we found an area that looked like it'd be perfect for building a base. But you're gonna need some tools first, Zozo. Maybe start out by gathering some wood. Good idea, Grace. I used what little baby eel strength I had to break down a tree and collect the wood for building a wooden pickaxe. It's mining time. And then I mined into the ground, collecting enough stone to build myself a stone pickaxe and a stone sword. But I didn't stop there. I continued gathering stone until I had enough to build myself a basic base with two rooms. One for me and one for Grace the Gorgon. These rooms both look awesome, Zozo. Thank you. It wasn't easy to build them, but I'm glad I did. Out of curiosity, Grace, why did you choose to stay with me? Because I hate bullies and I wasn't going to leave you out there, vulnerable to the dread beast. We'll stick together and win this thing. Oh, you're the best, Grace. And that moment was so heartwarming. My hearts grew twice as big. Literally, I was bigger, stronger, had 20 hearts, and I gained an awesome new ability, shooting flaming wither skulls. Ah, yeah, that's more like it. From day six to day eight, I ventured out to a new location, the Basalt Barrera. It's nice to take a load off and see new places. It takes my mind off the fact that a terrifying monster wants to eat me alive. Oh no, now I'm thinking about it again. But I didn't have any more time to stand around feeling anxious because the same ghost that was hassling me earlier emerged out of the trees. Zozo, I found you. I really wish you'd unfind me. You still have your sense of humor. Good, you'll need that when you're a ghost 
The days are dark and the nights are long. It will never end. Actually, it's going to end for you right now. I was sick of being chased away by monsters, so I unleashed my fire breath onto the ghost, weakening him and making him physical before finishing him off with my stone sword. Nobody's eating me. I won't allow it. My battle with the ghost must have caught the attention of a cyclops who was wandering through the basalt barrera. He immediately approached me with an offer. A name's Sid, Sid the Cyclops. I may not have great depth perception, but I can see a real strength in ya. Think you can do a job for me? I got a local freaky customer he needs a tendon to. Sure, I'll give it the old fire you'll try. From day 9 to day 10, I went out to a remote part of the Basalt Barrera with Sid the Cyclops following close behind. Who exactly do you want me to fight here, Sid? Believe me, when you see him, you'll know. And Sid was right. The second I saw him, I did know. It was a huge, frightening dread night. I could see why Sid didn't want to take him on himself. Well, here goes nothing. I ran in and faced the dread knight alone. Doth thou wish to challenge me, knave? Oh yeah, consider yourself challenged. Tis a battle then. I fought the Dread Knight, but none of my attacks seemed to do any damage. The fight seemed hopeless, and in the end, all I could do was turn and run. I met back up with Sid the Cyclops, not far from the side of the battle. I'm not strong enough to take on this Dread Knight yet, Sid. But until I am, how about you come and hang out at my base? Just sounds like a guess. Let's go. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to my base with Sid the Cyclops. I got to work on building him a new room right alongside the rooms I'd built for myself and Grace. By the time I was done, Sid looked delighted. I've always wanted a second home. This is a big deal for me. I feel like a celebrity or something. I'm glad you like it, Sid. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Well, it's not quite as humble now. Go take a look at some upgrades I created while you were building my bedroom took a look at the upgrades, and I was extremely impressed. He'd built a furnace, which would allow me to smelt ores into ingots for building weapons and armor. And he'd also built a storage room, where I could store more weapons and resources. Speaking of resources, I'm hungry. I should probably find a way to keep my food supply sustainable. To that end, I started herding some chickens from the surrounding badlands and created a small farm with some coops to keep them for eggs and chicken. And now, it's time to put that furnace to good use. I searched until I found a deep cave, and inside, it didn't take me long to find a nice vein of iron ore. I mined it with my stone pickaxe until I had enough to take back. I returned to my base and smelted the ore into iron ingots. With the help of a few leftover sticks, I made myself an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. This will give me something to put in the storage room too. From day 13 to day 15, I started feeling antsy, thinking about the fact that the Dread Beast was out there, biding its time, waiting for the right moment to strike. I realized that I needed to get stronger, so I returned to Grace the Gorgon for some advice on what I should do next. One of the biggest sources of the Dread Beast's power is the Legion of Ghosts created from his former meals. The more of them you can free from their bounds on the overworld, the weaker he'll be. I actually think there's another one near here at the Basalt Barrera. Because Grace always seemed to be right, I ventured out to the Basalt Barrera, and exactly as she'd predicted, there was one of the Dread Beast's ghostly servants waiting for me. Looks like I have my work cut out for me here. Through a mix of my fire attacks and the work of my strong new iron sword, I was able to defeat the ghost. It even dropped a potion of strength on the ground, which I picked up and drank. Wait, I can feel something happening. Suddenly, I started to grow, getting bigger and feeling my number of hearts grow to 30. I also experienced additional damage on every single one of my attacks. Grace was right, I'm much stronger already. This really was the trip out here. From day 16 to day 19, I went out to the bayou as a test of my courage. It was dangerous to wander around there with so much water everywhere. Still, what's life without a little risk here and there? I can't be a truly powerful fire eel if I'm not brave. But this journey was more valuable than just building up my confidence. While I was slithering along, I discovered a strange old book of fairy tales and decided to give it a read. Man's hunger for wealth and power once unlocked darker and deeper hungers. Greedy miners who wanted diamonds and gold dug deeper than they should and uncovered the monstrous dread beast a creature with a hunger to devour the whole world. Wow, so that's where the Dread Beast came from. I wonder what I can do with this information. But I didn't have time to ponder on this for too long because I looked up and saw another eerie ghost floating toward me out of the darkness of the bayou. 
You can't escape, Zozo. I thought I could escape. <laughs> I was so silly. He ate me like he ate all the others. He'll eat you too, Zozo. He'll eat you too. I vaporized the ghost with a wither skull and then ran out of there. I didn't feel like spending any more time in the bayou that day. From day 20 to day 22, I went back into the mining cave to collect a little more iron ore before returning to my base and smelting it into iron ingots. I've got some cool weapons and tools. Now it's time to get myself some awesome armor. I made an iron chest plate, which admittedly, you couldn't actually see on my fire ill body, but would provide me some valuable defensive abilities anyway. I'm stronger than I've ever been, but now it's time to use that strength for good. There's an old score I have to settle. I returned again to the Basalt Pereira with one thing on my mind, finally defeating the Dread Knight. When I found him again, I pulled out my sword and squared up to him. Doth thou return to fight me, you sad little fire ill? You cannot destroy that which has already been destroyed. What does that even mean? Once upon a time, I was a knight, a brave and powerful knight. I battled many a monster and believed that I could also slay the dread beast. But I was wrong, terribly, terribly wrong. The dread beast devoured me, and now my soul is bound to his. I'm a shade of my former self. And let me free you from this terrible state, dread knight. I fired a wither skull at the dread knight, then ran in to battle him directly. With my new skills and my iron sword, I was able to hold my own against the dread knight and eventually destroy him. Rest well, tragic knight. I'll avenge you and all the others. Oh, will you now? I turned with horror to see the dread beast itself standing close behind me. Even with my new strength, he still looked just as frightening. Tasty, tasty little eel. It's almost time, Zozo. I'm getting so hungry I can barely control myself. I didn't want to stick around and see if the dread beast could keep a leash on his appetite. Instead, I just turned and ran away as quickly as I could. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to my base to tell Sid the Cyclops that I had managed to defeat the Dread Knight and free him from his torment in the process. Zozo, how did the go go, my guy? The Dread Knight won't be bothering you anymore. I don't feel much like celebrating about it, though. He was just as much a victim of the Dread Beast as me. He's really, really evil. Evil is as evil does, I guess. What can we do about it? We can help each other. We can fight back. I like where your head's at, kid. But where do we start? I should probably upgrade my gear. If I want to do that, I'd better get mining. I headed down into the mining cave to see what I could find. I managed to gather some iron ingots, and I took them back to my base and smelted them, making an iron helmet. I feel tougher already. Then Grace the Gorgon approached me. I heard what you did for the Dread Knight. That was an amazing start. As a thank you for your hard work, I've added an improvement to the base that I believe you'll approve of. It's a security bunker, a safe place to retreat to in the event of an ambush by the Dread Beast or one of his ghostly army. Awesome, thank you! From day 27 to day 31, I went back out to the bayou, equipped with my new helmet and a renewed sense of purpose. I was a little worried I would run into another ghost, but instead, a big friendly panda came ambling up to me. I heard you're the guy who got rid of that ghost who was terrorizing us out in these parts. Thank you kindly for that. Of course! Are there any more ghosts out here? None that I've seen, but if you're offering help, I sure could use a place to stay. See, that nasty ghost critter tore my house right up. Any chance you've got a spare room? And that room is panda-sized? Sure! Well, I don't have a room for you yet, but I can build one. Let's go back to my base, and we'll get you settled in. Thanks! By the way, my name's Patrick. I'm Zozo. You sure are impressive for an eel, Zozo. Well, that's kind of reductive, but thanks anyway. Come on! Patrick the Panda followed me back to my base, and I got to work on building him a room where he could stay. When I was finished, Grace the Gorgon came to talk to me. Sozo, Terry the Troll needs help. There's a ghost attacking his home, but I can't fight it alone. Will you come with me and help? Of course, poor Terry. Let's head on over there right now. From day 32 to day 35, Grace the Gorgon and I traveled to the Badlands to help Terry the Troll. When we got there, Terry's shack was a mess. And I don't mean he forgot to pick up his dirty socks. I mean the whole thing had been knocked down. And Terry was nowhere to be seen. Instead, there was just a creepy ghost hovering out front. 
You're too late, Zozo. Your friend has already left this life behind. Pity he died this way and not in the jaws of the mighty Dread Beast. He was not as lucky as you will be. What do you mean? That can't be true! Ah, but it is. One way or another, you will join us. I have heard that the Dread Beast is craving eel pie, and his hunger will soon be sated. No, it won't! You may have taken my friend, but I'll never let you beat me! I shot a wither skull at the ghost and vaporized it! It felt good, but I was still heartbroken about Terry! We can't let Terry's death be in vain, Zozo! I may only be a little fire eel, but as long as I have fire breath in my body, I won't let the Dread Beast do this to anyone ever again! From day 36 to day 39, I returned to the Basalt Barrera. Now that I got rid of the Dread Knight, this place is pretty peaceful. I'd love to kick back and relax out here. Well, not kick. I don't have feet, but you get the idea. I was just about to try and squeeze in a little relaxation between quests when another ogre approached me. Oi, your name's Zozo, isn't it? I've got a right awful bloke in me house. He just won't leave. I tried to chase him out, and he said he'd burn me to a crisp he did. Wow, people from the nether sure have a funny way of talking. But I get what you mean, friend. Show me the way, and I'll do my best to help. He took me to his house, where, sure enough, a great big fire ogre was getting ready to burn the place down. Luckily, I threw a wither skull and stopped him before he could torch the nether ogre's house. Here you go, still just as not burnt down as it was before. Well, Bob's your uncle. Say, you're that bloke what's looking to get rid of the dread beast. I am. And he's only out there in the swamplands he is. That's good to know. I just won't go there until I'm strong enough to fight and win. From day 40 to day 43, I traveled back home to my base. When I got there, I was surprised to find Sid the Cyclops waiting for me. Hey there, Zozo! While you were out, I built some additional rooms. Oh, that's amazing! I need a room for my friend here. But what made you think of that? Well, I was hoping we could invite more guests to come stay. I know a few guys. It turns out, that very guy was Patrick the Panda, who I'd already met. The more the merrier. Here's your new room, Patrick. Holy, it's perfect, Zozo. Say, could you do me one more favor? Could you go to the bayou and get my favorite book? I left it out there, and I've got a hankering for reading. Sure, I'll head over there now. From day 44 to day 49, I traveled to the bayou to look for Patrick the Panda's favorite book. I probably should have asked him what it looked like, or what it was called. Oh well, I'm here now. But I wasn't the only one here. The terrifying dread beast popped out right in front of me. Indeed you are, Zozo. Tasty eel, it's almost my supper time. Once it is, I will feast. And the prophecy foretells that once I eat a fire eel, I will reach my ultimate power and devour all that I see. I'll never let you eat me, especially not after you said all that scary stuff. When the time comes, you will not be able to escape. With that, he disappeared, but I didn't get a chance to wonder where he went. In his place, he left behind a huge, mean-looking blue manticore. Look upon your future, Zozo. If I could not defeat the Dread Beast, then surely a tiny, insignificant fire eel will not be able to. You will be devoured like the rest. Why still work for him after what he did to you? Fool, there is no choice. Once the Dread Beast has eaten you, there is no freedom. That's terrible. I could tell he was the toughest opponent I'd faced so far. But if I wanted to save myself and free the blue manticore from the Dread Beast grip, I was going to have to win! From day 50 to day 53, I continued my fight against the blue manticore. He was even stronger than he looked. I was pretty worried that I might not make it out of this one. Just accept your fate! Never! No one deserves that! I used all of the strength I had and fought as hard as I could. And with the help of my trusty Wither Skull, I finally managed to defeat him. But by the time I did, the Dread Beast was long gone. Oh, I was hoping to find out where exactly his base is. I know it's in a swamp, but where? Just then, I noticed something on the ground. The Manticore must have dropped it. I took a closer look, and it was a map with Dread Beast Clubhouse written on it. This must be where his base is. Once I'm strong enough, I'm going straight there. 
From day 54 to day 57, I continued my search for Patrick the Panda's book. Finally, I came across a book lying on the ground. I went over to pick it up, but a hell ostrich leapt at me and started attacking. Hey, that's my friend's book. I need it back. The hell ostrich didn't say anything. It just kept attacking me. Okay, we don't have to chat about it, but you just have to let me take the book. With a few well-timed attacks, I was able to defeat the hell ostrich and grab the book. Sure enough, it said Panda's book on it. It also dropped something else. Netherite ingots. Maybe I can use these later. I hurried back to my base to find Patrick the Panda. Patrick, I got your book. Thank you, Zozo. I reckon I'll never know how to repay you. You can pay me back with your friendship and by enjoying that book. I also happen to have heard tell of a magic apple, one that gives anyone who eats it a massive boost of strength. Might be just what you need. I'll keep an eye out for a magic apple then. From day 58 to day 62, I took a look around my base. This place is pretty great, but it could be even better. I wandered over to the chicken farm and had an idea. That's it, I'll expand this area so we can have even more chickens. With all of these new people staying at the base, we'll need lots of eggs. After that, I headed back into the mining cave to look for anything I could use to upgrade my gear. It took a long time, but I managed to find some diamonds. I took them back to my base and used them to craft a set of diamond armor, a diamond pickaxe, and a diamond sword. Wait until the dread beast gets a look at this. Good luck eating all these diamonds. Grace the Gorgon then approached with some more good news. Zozo, come and see what I've done. I've added to the base. This is the party room, where we can all celebrate when you've bested the beast. I know you can do it. Thanks for believing in me, Grace. From day 63 to day 66, I was hanging out at my base, practicing my dance moves in the party room when Sid the Cyclops came to see me. Zozo, I heard that there might be some helpful materials in Butch Forest. Where'd you hear that? Got a tip from my materials guy. It's good enough for your guy, it's good enough for me. I traveled to the birch forest and got to work looking for anything useful. As I searched, I spotted a maned wolf stalking her way toward me. Please don't attack me, I'm busy. I wasn't gonna attack you. I was gonna say hi and ask you for a favor if that's okay. I'm Mallory. Nice to meet you, I'm Zozo. What kind of favor? My baby was kidnapped by a silver skeleton. Please help me get it back. Of course, where did you last see him? Let's go. From day 67 to day 70, I followed the maned wolf to another part of the birch forest. There, I could see a silver skeleton. Where are you hiding the baby maned wolf? I'll never tell. She's definitely not locked in that building over there. Huh, I tricked you. Time to fight. I didn't give the silver skeleton any more time. I shot a wither skull at the skeleton. He attacked me in return, but my armor kept me from taking too much damage. Then it was time to test out my new diamond sword. I was able to defeat the silver skeleton with only two swipes. Then I opened the door to the nearby totally not suspicious building, and there was the baby wolf. Thank you so much. I'll change her name to Zozo after you. That's really nice, but please don't do that. A thanks is enough. From day 71 to day 74, I decided to follow the map to the cold swamplands and try to sneak a look at that dread beast hideout. While I was following the map's path, I started thinking about how much had already happened. I've had some amazing adventures so far. To find even more of my awesome antics, make sure to search Z-O-Z-O. -Z That's my name. Finally, I reached the cold swamplands. Jeez, they call it cold for a reason. This is definitely no place for a fire eel. Then, in swooped the dread beast. You will have plenty of time to get used to it after I've had my meal and your spirit is trapped here forever. The dread beast found me before I found him. Time to see if I'm ready to fight this guy. I shot a wither skull at him, but he tanked it with complete ease. I'll try the sword. I attacked with my sword, but he barely seemed to feel it. Like a mere paper cut. Uh-oh, he hit me back, and my new armor protected me from getting completely knocked down, but I knew I wouldn't last too much longer. I'm not ready to take him on. From day 75 to day 78, I ran all the way back to my base. I wish I could fight him now, but if I do that before I get stronger, I'll lose for sure. I decided to lie down in my room for a while. I want to be a hero, but I'm starting to think that, sadly, I'm only an eel. Grace the Gorgon knocked on my door, interrupting my sad thoughts. Hey Zozo, I know you're disappointed, but I wanted to show you an addition I've made to our home here. Come and look. I followed her all the way to a new watchtower. 
Oh, this is pretty cool. Thank you, Grace. I feel better. Well, Grace and I were admiring the watch tower and all the watching we'd be able to do up there. Patrick, join me. Take a look at what I found. He handed me a magic apple. Hey, this is like the one you told me about. Not just like it, it's the same one. Try it. I ate the apple, and I felt myself growing bigger and more powerful. My heart's increased to 60, and I gained a new attack. I could shoot a fireball. I'll show that dread beast what being a fire eel is all about. From day 79 to day 84, I traveled back to the cold swamplands. This time, if the dread beast ambushes me again, I'll be ready. I didn't spot him anywhere, but I was able to test out my new strength and my fireball on an undead scorpion that tried to sting me. Nice try, but I'm not a little fire eel that people can pick on anymore. I'm a big, strong eel that plays by my own rules. That awesome act of firepower attracted the attention of a friendly polar bear. You sure are. I know what that's like. Well, not the being an eel pot. As you can see, I'm a polar bear. Hi. I decided to sit with the polar bear for a little while, and when I finally got up to go, he stopped me for a second. Thanks for the company. Hey. Is that netherite? Attach it to your sword, like this. Then he crafted a netherite sword for me. Thank you, this is great! From day 85 to day 89, I said goodbye to the nice polar bear and took my new netherite sword back to my base. When I got there, I saw that someone had destroyed my new watchtower. Hey, Grace worked really hard on that. I looked around for the culprit and I saw a ghost floating away into the Badlands. Oh no you don't. I chased after the ghost as fast as I could. As I did, a painted kitty stopped me. Excuse me? Could you point the way to the birch forest? I'm terribly lost. I quickly pointed her in the right direction, then kept running after the ghost. Looks like he's running toward the cold swamplands. From day 90 to day 94, I finally managed to catch up with the ghost. He ran into the Dread Beast's hideout. I stopped just outside. I'm not ready to go in there yet, but I can wait out here and see what happens. The ghost came back out of the hideout like he was looking for me. I got a better look at him and saw that he wasn't just a ghost. He was a huge, tough-looking dread ghoul. My, my, my. Look who took the bait. It's the main course for the coming feast. I'm so sick of you all saying stuff like that. Then try and stop me, if you dare. I shot a fireball at the dread ghoul and it barely even phased him. Uh-oh, he's the toughest minion I've fought yet. From day 95 to day 97, I continued my battle against the Dread Ghoul. I really need to do my best if I'm gonna win this one. With the help of my new netherite sword, I was finally able to knock the Dread Ghoul down for good. His helmet fell to the floor and I grabbed it. It was netherite. This goes great with my sword. Hey, what's this? I spotted a note on the ground. It says the Dread Beast is getting worried about me. He thinks I might be able to destroy him before he can eat me and fulfill the prophecy. This is great news. It means I'm definitely on the right track. I can't back down. I've got to get everything I possibly need before I enter the final battle. On day 98, I returned to my base. Grace the Gorgon and the rest were waiting for me. I'm really starting to think I can do this. I wasn't so sure before, but now I know everything will work out. It will. And look, I fixed the watchtower. The Dread Beast and his ilk can't keep us down. Yeah. Next, I spoke to Patrick the Panda. Zozo, before you head on out of here to fight that big boss, take this. It's a potion of strength. It'll power you up good. Thank you. This is just what I need. And finally, Sid the Cyclops. I don't have any potions or any repairs done. Just this. I may only have one eye, but I can see a bright future ahead of you. And the rest of us, too. Because you're gonna do it, kid. Thank you. Well, no more waiting around. I've got to go see a dread beast about a battle. On day 99, I traveled back to the cold swamplands and the Dread Beast hideout. When I got there, I started to get pretty worried because the whole place was crawling with ghosts. Well, they were floating, but they were everywhere. But the maned wolf from before came bounding up to me. I can handle these ghosts. You get inside while I keep them busy. While the maned wolf took care of the ghost, I finally entered the Dread Beast clubhouse. On day 100, I entered the Dread Beast base and found him waiting there for me. Yes, I knew you'd be here soon. My stomach has been growling. Time to feast. Why do you have to eat all these innocent victims? Why can't you just have some pie or a sandwich like everybody else? 
because no sandwich in this world tastes sweeter than absolute power. What about pie? Pie's pretty sweet. Enough talk. I'm much too hungry, and I'm craving fire eel. He lunged at me and attacked, but I was ready. I dodged him and shot back a fireball in return. It hit him, but he kept going. He rushed at me again, and this time he knocked me back. But I wasn't done yet. I used my netherite sword to get the upper hand. Zozo, imagine it. If you join my ghostly army, then you will share in my infinite power. The world will be ours. No thanks, I'm not taking that deal. I drank the strength potion and finally got the better of him. And with one more swipe of my sword, I destroyed the mighty, terrible dread beast. I did it, I saved the day. I'll say it, this eel is on fire. On day one, I spawned into the Sika woods as an adorable little fire rabbit. I may just be a wascally wabbit, but if you mess with me, that doesn't mean you won't get burned. I decided to hop through the woods and explore, hoping I wouldn't accidentally set anything on fire with my burning bunny body. At least I know I'll never get cold. I wanted to stay optimistic, but it got a lot harder when a big, scary bug came crawling out of the forest behind me. It was a Mermex soldier. Halt, by order of Her Majesty, the Mermex Queen. What is your business here? Don't worry, sir. I, I was just looking around. I spawned nearby. I can just leave if you want. Not so fast. We've been told to keep a lookout for suspicious rabbits. And you're both suspicious and a rabbit. Come with me. But what if I don't want to come with you? Then I'll just have to take you by force. I didn't like the idea of being taken by force, so I turned and hopped away as quickly as I could. I may have not had any weapons, but at least I was extremely fast. I'm just a baby fire rabbit for now with only 10 hearts, but if I can get away from these creepy crawlies, I'll be able to get bigger and stronger. But my little self pep talk was interrupted by another Mermex soldier popping out from behind a tree and stopping me in my tracks. Don't you know it's rabbit season, silly bunny? Us Mermex soldiers are everywhere in the Seco woods. You better come with me or someone, somewhere, is going to enjoy a bowl of rabbit soup tonight. That was clearly a threat, so I decided to play along and follow him so I could save my fire rabbit skin. On day two, the Mermex soldier pushed me all the way to a weird, bee-like looking hive base on the edge of the woods. Not the kind of place where I'd typically like to spend my day. What is this place? This is the hive, you misbehaving little rabbit. This is where me and my fellow Mermexes live with our wonderful queen. She's currently in a different biome on royal business, but when she returns, she'll question you personally. How long will that take, though? It will take as long as it takes. Do not question the judgment of our beloved queen. He didn't talk to me much after that. I was taken to some kind of holding cell in the hive and pushed inside to wait for the return of the queen. But she could be gone for weeks. I don't want to be trapped in here for all that time. You're telling me. I turned and saw a pink pixie fluttering around the cell looking bored. I'm Paris, the pink pixie. I feel like I've been trapped in here forever. I was just flying through the Seco woods, minding my own business, when those Mermex goons grabbed me and dragged me in here for being suspicious. Sorry for making assumptions here, but can't you use your pink pixie magic to get us out of here? Nope, these walls are magic proof. Hmm, but are they fireproof? I walked closer to the wooden fence gates until they caught fire and the block started breaking. Soon enough, we were free. As we escaped, a Mermex soldier almost caught us, but we managed to get out of there. Thank you for freeing me, Zozo. I'm going to go see my family. They're probably worried about me, but I hope we meet again someday. I hope that too, Paris. Safe travels. Paris left, and I decided to get out of the Sika Woods before more Mermexes were sent after me. On day three, I found my way into the meadow, where I figured that no Mermex soldier could ever find me. Man, escaping that hive was hungry work though. I wonder if there's some food around here that's perfect for a little fire rabbit like me. Not long after, I found a patch of carrots. Perfect! I dug them up and ate them, feeling my hunger bar replenish. It made me feel a whole lot better. Until another, bigger rabbit hopped over to me, and he didn't seem pleased. Hey, those are my carrots you just ate. They were prized, award winning, and you just ate them without even asking me. Do you have any idea how messed up that is? Oh no, I'm so sorry. I didn't know they were yours. I would never would have eaten them if I did. You think that makes me feel better? I'm still down a bunch of carrots. 
We rabbits should stick together, not steal from each other. Is there any way I could make it up to you in the name of rabbit solidarity? Hmm. Well, there are a few favors you could do for me. Follow me. I'll figure out a way for you to pay off your debts. Thank you so much for your forgiveness. I'm Zozo, by the way. I'm KR. Let's go. And I followed KR, eager to get back into his good graces. From day four to day five, KR escorted me back to his base in the meadow. He must have been pretty brave to live out here in the middle of nowhere. This is my place. Don't tell anyone about this place under any circumstances. Why? Because I like my privacy. Don't ask too many questions. It's not a likable quality. Inside the base, he explained to me exactly how I could repay him for eating his special carrots. As you know, the world is hard for little rabbits like us. People think they can pick on us, look down on us, and I've seen too much of that throughout my life. I've kept a list of the kind of people who have made my life harder over the years. Rabbit haters, you know. Help me get through my list, and not only will you be happier, you'll have repaid your debt. That sounds like something I could do. Where should I start, KR? You can start by getting out of here and making your own base. It'd be dangerous for us to be seen together. Take this stone sword and stone pickaxe and make something of yourself before you come back to me. He gave me the tools and I got out of there. The meadow gave me the creeps, so I decided I'd set up my base in the ebony woods instead. I used the pickaxe to mine some stone. I made myself an axe and cut down some trees for wood. I found a nice clearing in the forest and built myself a basic base where I could at least sleep with a roof over my head for the night. But when I was done building, I got my first unwelcome visitor, one of the Mermex soldiers who had captured me earlier. There you are! I knew you were the killer rabbit, and now I'm gonna put you down. Killer rabbit? What? That's not me. I'm not gonna listen to your lies. Time to battle, you bad bunny. He seemed strong, and as I was, I felt like I couldn't beat him. I summoned up my strength and leveled up. I got bigger, stronger. I now had 20 hearts and a new ability, the fireball attack. And with one blast of that fireball, the Mermex soldier was gone. I really am living up to the fire rabbit name. From day six to day eight, I was exploring the ebony woods a little further. It was a strange and magical place, made even more magical by a sudden reappearance, Paris the Pink Pixie. I immediately hopped over to meet her. Hey, Paris, is everything okay? I wish I could say it was, Zozo, but no, something terrible happened. I went to see my family, but they were all gone and their home was destroyed. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, Paris, that's terrible. Do you want to stay at my base? I can help you in your time of need. Thank you, Zozo, but right now, I need to be alone. We'll speak again soon. Be safe out there. Paris the Pink Pixie left. I felt terrible for her and started to wonder if maybe the ones who destroyed Paris's family were the same ones that KR warned me about. Maybe it was time to begin my quest. I returned to KR's base in the meadow and asked him what I should do first to complete my mission. Your first target is the hairy troll further into the meadow. He's a violent, dangerous individual, so you should take him out with extreme prejudice. Do you think he could have been behind the destruction of the Pink Pixie family? What? How do you know about that? I know the survivor. Hmm, there's a strong possibility. But don't ask him about it when you meet him. Just destroy him. He'll try to deceive you. From day 9 to day 10, I followed KR's instructions and went further out into the meadow. Wow, this is fast and empty. But I pressed on. I needed to avenge Paris and repay my carrot debt to KR. There was no backing out now. Suddenly, the hairy troll jumped out and ambushed me, ready to attack. I knew he'd send someone after me. Of course he'd be too cowardly to go after me himself. Pathetic. Cowardly? No, what's cowardly is destroying a whole family of pink pixies rather than picking on someone your own size. I'm just doing a favor for a friend. You have terrible taste in friends. I've never hurt any pink pixies. He told me you'd lie. Let's battle. The hairy troll was a tough enemy, but with my sword and fireballs, I was able to defeat him in the end. Shortly after his defeat, a wolf woman came out of the forest. Wow, you really fried that troll. I had no idea anyone could do those awesome fire tricks. Thanks, I don't like hurting people, but I needed to stop him from ever hurting anyone, like he hurt the Pink Pixie family. Oh, the Pink Pixie family. I heard about that. It was terrible. But I don't think a troll was behind that. It was some kind of other creature. 
So, the attacker is still at large? Oh no, I need to speak to KR about this. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to KR's base, telling him that I'd defeated the hairy troll, but that the one who'd attacked the Pink Pixie family was still out there somewhere. If the hairy troll wasn't behind it, then it must be the Thorn Wolf, a truly dangerous and evil creature that lives deep in the ebony woods. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the Thorn Wolf was behind the Pink Pixie family attack. Thorn Wolf? Even the name sounds scary. It's definitely a scary creature. I recommend getting better weapons and tools before you go to destroy it. Otherwise, you may find yourself at a disadvantage. Good idea, KR. I'll get right on it. I found my way to a cave in the meadow and explored until I found some iron ore veins inside. I used some of my spare stone to make a furnace, then mined the iron ore and smelted it into ingots. Now time to do some crafting. I created an iron sword and an iron pickaxe, an iron chest plate, and then left the cave where I ran into a creeper spider. Oh no! Rather than engaging, I ran away as quickly as I could. The creeper spider exploded behind me, leaving a huge crater in the ground. From day 13 to day 15, I ventured further into the ebony woods than I ever had before. My little fire rabbit heart filled with fear. If the thorn wolf really was as powerful and as dangerous as KR told me, then I could be in real danger even being around here. As I was exploring, I heard a sound behind me, so I turned and saw the Thorn Wolf. He was right there, and I was totally surprised. I braced myself for an attack, but he didn't attack. Instead, he spoke with a kindly voice. Is everything okay, young rabbit? You seem nervous. Are, are you the Thorn Wolf? Oh, yes, it is my duty to patrol the ebony woods and protect the creatures there. So you're not a bad guy? Well, we always try our best, don't we? Stay safe out there, little rabbit. The thorn wolf left, and I was confused. He was nothing like KR told me. Something really wasn't right here, and I needed to speak to KR immediately. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to the meadow to find KR's base. But it was empty, and KR was nowhere to be seen. This is strange. Maybe he's just out there running some errands. I returned to my base, only to find that Paris the Pink Pixie was there waiting for me. This couldn't have been a good sign. I knew that much. What's wrong, Paris? Zozo, it's an emergency. I know who destroyed my family. Who? It was a creature they call the Killer Rabbit. It's one of the most dangerous things in the overworld. Killer Rabbit? K-R, oh no! And just like that, it all came together. KR was the killer rabbit, and he was behind everything. That meant I needed to get back to the Thorn Wolf as quickly as possible. He was in terrible danger. And I was right, and I didn't realize it soon enough. When I was there, Thorn Wolf was already gone, and only the killer rabbit remained. I wondered how long it'd take you to figure it out. Oh well, you are at least a good tool for a while, even if you're useless to me now. I don't get it. Why were you using me like that? I needed a thaw rabbit, someone to take the heat for me. And who's better at taking heat than a fire rabbit? Besides, you really did eat my carrots, and I couldn't let that fly, could I? You may have used me, killer rabbit, but now I'm gonna take you down. I fired a fireball at him, and it seemingly had no effect. And when he hit me, it was like being hit by a train. Everything went dark, and I was gone. From day 20 to day 22, I woke up, and the killer rabbit was gone. Instead, a mysterious figure was standing next to me, a large hippogriff. Do you work for or with the killer rabbit? Answer quickly. No, I only ever worked with him when he was tricking me. Now I know who he truly is. I'm 100% against him. Good, then we have a common enemy. I am Laharl the hippogriff, and I was a friend of the thorn wolf. We were defenders of the people, guardians of the forest. But now he's gone, and only I remain. You're not alone. I want to be better. I'm Zozo. Let me become a guardian of the forest, too. We're going to defeat the killer rabbit together. Come to my base with me, and we'll start to plan. Agreed. We will defeat that monstrous creature and keep the people of the forest safe forevermore. I went into the forest with a Laharl, and we gathered enough stone and wood to construct a new house for him to stay in. Together, we'd be stronger than we'd ever been before. From day 23 to day 26, I was hopping back through the Sika Woods where I first spawned when I saw the pink glow of Paris the Pixie. Predictably, Paris the Pixie was in peril perpetuated by a pestering pursuer. <laughs> Excuse me, so much alliteration. 
Zozo, is that you? Help! This wind serpent is trying to blow me away! The wind serpent did indeed look fierce, but even a gust of wind will only fan the flames of this fire rabbit! I hopped forward and hit the wind serpent with a fireball. The slithering mob stopped chasing Paris and started to fly towards me. We battled it out in melee, and I was able to bring it down with my sword. Somehow I knew I could count on you, Zozo. I'm just glad you still trust me. I attacked all the wrong people because of KR, and I let that menace run free all the while. That killer rabbit gives our kind a bad name. You weren't the only one fooled by his goody-good act. Don't worry, Zozo. I know that you're out here trying to do the right thing doing the best that I can, and I'll work with anyone else who is willing to help me take that lying killer down. Count me in. My family got hurt because of his wicked ways. He won't be getting away with that. Thanks, Paris. From day 27 to day 31, I found a flock of sheep wandering through the woods. They looked really tired, like they had been walking for several days. I hopped over to see what was going on and soon found out what had happened. These sheep were friends of the thorn wolf from the ebony woods, and since he was gone, they'd been looking for a new protector to save them from the killer rabbit. You'll be safe at my base, sheep. Not only is it back where you used to live, but I'll be your protector now. When I got back to my base in the ebony woods, I helped the sheep settle in and then went to go see how Laharl was holding up. Welcome back, Zozo. I made the base cooler by adding some rat banners. Wow, awesome work, Laharl. All the buildings at the base now had awesome rabbit banners on them, which suited me just fine. Meanwhile, over at the real killer rabbit's base, not the pretend base over in the meadow, he was now in the process of maniacally planning his next wicked plot from his evil lair. Now, there may be a few people around who know that I'm the killer rabbit, but I think we can arrange some accidents for those individuals. What say you, my fine warden dragon friend? If there's anyone who is good at causing accidents, it's me. They might as well call me Daisy. First name, Oopsie. Full name, Oopsie Daisy. You just had an accident of the you're not gonna be around anymore kind. We're really gonna need to work on your threatening lines there, Oopsie. It's difficult. My evil boss is a rabbit. I mean, sorry, boss. You better wise up. I'm not just any rabbit. I'm a killer rabbit. From day 32 to day 35, I remembered that one of the Mermax soldiers that I had encountered said that they had been looking for suspicious rabbits. So I made the choice to go and seek out the hive of the Mermax queen. It might be a rabbit, but I know what suspicious one they might be looking for. If I tell them who the killer rabbit is, maybe all the other rabbits will stop being captured like I was. I made it to the hive and found that it was guarded by Mermax soldiers. I guess I should have expected that. Halt and stay halted. I'm not halting. I'm here to see the queen. Like we'd fall for that one, rabbit. The Mermex soldier tried to fight me, but I dodged his attacks. I didn't want to hurt anybody while I was trying to make an alliance, so I shot a fireball away from them to let them know who I was. Look, I'm not the rabbit you're looking for. I've got fire powers. Fire powers? But that means you're the one who broke out of the cell. That is true, but only because I shouldn't have been there in the first place. I know which rabbit really did the crimes, so he should be the one who does the time. Okay, we still have questions, but that rhyme convinced us to take you to the queen. Yes, don't be mean. Let me see the queen. You can stop rhyming now. The Mermex soldiers let me inside of the hive so that I could have my important meeting with the Mermex queen. Naturally, the room where I was able to speak with the queen was her own throne room. I am the Mermex Queen. What is your request to my majesty, small rabbit? It concerns the fate of all the land, your Mermex Queenliness. I know who the killer rabbit is. You do? Oh, at long last, that monster has been found. How do you know about him? He went by the name K.R., and now he's on a new spree of attacks on innocent creatures all throughout the biomes. He always was like that, even in my mother's time. She was the Mermex Queen before me, and when the creatures of the woods started being attacked, she suspected everyone but the innocent-looking rabbit. It was her mistake, because the killer rabbit claimed her as another one of his victims. I had to take over the throne, just as my mother's killer went into hiding. I've been hunting him down ever since. It's such a sad story. I promise to help you bring the killer rabbit to justice, with all the fire in my heart. There is more, but it's far too painful to talk about. You should go home for now. I will send a soldier to visit once I've emotionally prepared myself. From day 36 to day 39, I got ready to take my armor up a notch in defense by preparing to go back into the cave for some more iron ore. The killer rabbit was a lot older and more experienced than me, so I had to be all the more prepared for our eventual showdown. I 
soon found a spot in the cave where iron was abundant and mined away, adding the iron ore to my inventory. Next, I got out my crafting table and smelted the iron ore into the iron ingots I would need to craft the rest of my armor. That should do it. All right, time to become an iron fire rabbit. I made myself an iron axe since I had been gathering so much wood lately, and an iron helmet, iron leggings, and a pair of iron boots to complete my full set of iron armor. You can't see it on my fur, but believe me, it's there. Now equipped with all this brand new iron gear, I ventured deeper in the cave and found that beneath the iron, there were a few diamonds to be mined. I made sure to get them before I left. Later on, I was back above ground when I got an unexpected visitor. He was half rabbit and half wolf, a rabbit wolf. Hi there, bet you never met nobody like me before. Hey, you're right. Anyway, the Mermex Queen said I could leave the dungeon cell at the half if I went and brought you back to her. Let me guess, her soldiers locked you up because you were a suspicious rabbit? Well, yeah, I mean, look at me. I'm such a suspicious rabbit, it's hard to know if I'm even a rabbit. Anyway, you should go meet the Mermex Queen over in the Ebony Woods. From day 40 to day 43, I went to meet the Mermex Queen over in the Ebony Woods. Your queenliness, I am excited to work together and solve these crimes. I knew the rabbit wolf wouldn't fail to bring you here. If you ever see him again, make sure to thank him for me. I certainly will. So, are you ready to tell me more about the killer rabbit and his previous rampage? Yes, it's time you knew everything about what happened with him. Even though we had met in a secret location and were trying to keep our conversation quiet, Oopsie Daisy the Warden Dragon had super powerful hearing and was able to pick up on our voices from another part of the woods. Oopsie Daisy, time for an accident to happen, on purpose. He barged into the clearing and fired a sonic laser blast at me, which did many hearts of damage. Hey, what's the big idea? Nothing. I just happened to be totally unintentionally getting rid of two people who know who the killer rabbit is by accident. Aha! Now I know who you work for. You just said it was the killer rabbit. Ah, uh, darn it. I actually didn't mean to do that. Oh well, I'll just make you disappear. Then nobody will know. He fired another sonic blast my way, which I almost avoided. I countered with a fireball that didn't seem to do much. I looked around for the Mermex Queen and saw that she had escaped while I had been talking to the Warden Dragon. Yeah, I should probably do the same thing. I ran off into the woods, trying to go a different direction so that the Warden Dragon wouldn't know who to follow. From day 44 to day 49, I had gotten away from the Warden Dragon and safely arrived back at my base. I never expected the Mermex Queen to be there as well, waiting to continue our conversation from where we left off. I was happy to see that she was okay and could fend for herself, even without her soldiers. I guess the Killer Rabbit knows we both know about him. That's why he sent that Warden Dragon to destroy us. Perhaps he needs to rely on his henchmen now, because he isn't as strong as he used to be. You mean that he used to be stronger? He totally demolished me the last time we fought! Well, he still is the Killer Rabbit, but he used to carry around a secret rare battle axe that made it really easy for him to make anyone he wanted disappear forever. He was a Killer Rabbit with a Killer Battle Axe? That's so scary! How did you stop him? I didn't. A mysterious mob known as a Crimson Phantom laid a curse upon the Battle Axe so that the Killer Rabbit could never use it again. I know. Maybe if we find this Battle Axe, we could use it against him. Didn't stop the Killer Rabbit from being evil, but it did weaken him. Then I'm off to the meadow. That's good thinking, Zozo. I heard that the Battle Axe was crafted deep down in the depths of the meadow. You can find some clues about it there. From day 50 to day 53, I delved all the way to the end of the meadow in order to find out more information about who crafted the battle axe that the Killer Rabbit used in his previous reign of terror. After a lot of searching, I came across an abandoned workshop that looked like it was once used for smithing weapons. This must be the place, I reckon. I found a book near the crafting table that was titled Axe Maker's Notes and opened it up to read the words inside. I have made a lot of axes out of a lot of different materials in my day, and boy do I love doing it. It's my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world. In fact, it's the only thing I do. I'm the axe maker after all. But this latest axe, it's not like the other ones. It's got an evil aura around it, like it's too sharp and too scary just to be used on trees. This axe seems like it could kill someone. It's a killer axe. I better get rid of it before someone uses it for evil. Oh, wait, what's that? Someone is coming! The sentence in the book ended there, and the rest of the pages were blank. Oh no, the killer rabbit must have snuck up behind the axe maker and gotten rid of him so he could steal the killer axe! What a fiend! 
Still, from what I'd read, the battle axe was a powerful weapon. It must be able to hurt the killer rabbit if he was willing to do so much to get it. I looked around for more clues, but couldn't find any, so I gave up and started to head back to my base. From day 54 to day 57, I was making my way through the meadow when I happened to pass by the area where I had found those carrots before. Didn't the killer rabbit say that those carrots were his? If I know rabbits, and I probably do because I am one, then that could mean that the killer rabbit's base might be around here too. I was excited that I had discovered a clue, but that excitement was quickly lost when the warden dragon showed up to blast me with a sonic laser attack. Whoops, pardon me. That time I was trying to get rid of you, and I accidentally didn't do enough damage. You did enough, actually. You don't have to do any more damage. No, I think I do. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do all the damage to you. As much as I wanted to, I was still not strong enough to take down the Warden Dragon, so I made my escape as quickly as I could. Even though I didn't find it, I was right about the Killer Rabbit's base being nearby. The horrible hare was there right now, scheming up a storm. Soon, yes, very soon, I will find a way to reverse the curse and take back my battle axe. All of them will pay then. From day 58 to day 62, I had made it back to the base and saw that Laharl had created a storage room for all of our weapons. Great work, Laharl. Thanks. I just figured since you were talking about a rare secret killer battle axe, I should make some room for it. One thing led to another, and now there's a whole room full of every other weapon we had. There seems to be a lot of empty spaces. I guess I'll have to make us some more. We could definitely use some diamond ones, since we don't have any yet. Good point. I'll see if there are any more diamonds down in the mine. I went down to the mines, and it was just my luck. There were some more diamonds right in the same cavern where I'd found the previous one. I dug all around so that I could have enough for a diamond weapon to put in the weapon storage room. Once the diamonds were gathered, I chose to craft two diamond swords, one for myself and one for storage. I also crafted a diamond chest plate and a diamond pickaxe because diamonds make everything better. From day 63 to day 66, Laharl and I were hanging out in the base when our conversation suddenly turned serious. When are we going to do something about that killer rabbit, Sozo? He's starting to become a real problem for everyone. I know, Laharl, but I can't even defeat the clumsy warden dragon he sent to make me disappear, much less the killer rabbit himself. But if you had that secret rare killer battle axe, you might stand a chance. But that's the trouble. I don't have that secret rare killer battle axe. Not yet you don't, but I think I might know where it is. Take me to it then. Don't you know how serious I am about wanting to stop the killer rabbit? Laharl listened to how serious I was and took me to the eroded badlands where we found some cursed ruins. We walked up to them until we hit an invisible barrier. How did these ruins get so cursed? A long time ago, the Crimson Phantom put a curse on these ruins that won't let anyone else enter. The Crimson Phantom? Isn't that the same creature that cursed the battle axe? Yes, but it looks like we need to get him to lift the curse before we can check to see if the battle axe is here. From day 67 to day 70, the Mermex Queen came into the base and told me that she had also been searching for the Crimson Phantom. He's been sighted in the Ebony Woods, but my guards weren't able to capture him. He's even taken a few down. I didn't realize this Crimson Phantom was such a dangerous creature. He sure is. I could really use your help bringing the Crimson Phantom in. Then let's do it. You can count on me, your queenliness. He left my base and went through the woods to find the Crimson Phantom flying away after having just defeated one of the Mermex soldiers. You'll never take me alive. I'm the dang old Crimson Phantom, you bunch of goofballs. Knock it off, Crimson Phantom. We need your help. Nah, who needs my help? He attacked, so I had to blast him with fire. The Crimson Phantom was definitely strong based on the way he tanked my attack. So I whacked him a few times with my diamond sword. Please, don't fight. We just want to stop the killer rabbit, and we know that you do too. You put a curse on his battle axe so he couldn't hurt people with it. So what if I did? It was probably the nicest thing I ever did for anyone. It doesn't have to be if you help us again. Please, Crimson Phantom. Ah, shucks. How can I say no to an innocent rabbit? And just like that, I convinced the Crimson Phantom to help us retrieve the secret rare killer battle axe so we could defeat the killer rabbit. From day 71 to day 74, that pesky accident-prone warden dragon showed up at my base to try to get rid of me again. Come on out and face me, Zozo. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> it will. 
I hadn't gotten any stronger since we fought before, but my weapons and armor were a bit more durable, so I hopped out and decided to take him on. Take this, Daisy! Fireball! I circled around the Warden Dragon, shooting fireballs and trying to avoid a sonic blast. I wasn't fast enough, and my armor couldn't protect me. I took many hearts of damage. I got down to just half a heart. Oh no, is this how I'm gonna go out? Apparently not, because instead of doing you in, I'm accidentally going to steal your best friend the Harl, and completely not on purpose, hold him hostage somewhere. You monster, why? I don't know, I'm not sure why I do anything anymore, but I am evil. The Warden Dragon dragged Laharl away, and there was nothing I could do about it because I was too weak. I can't do this, I'm just a rabbit. I went to the room to mope about it and close myself away from everyone else. I couldn't let them see me after such an embarrassing defeat. That was until the Crimson Phantom arrived. Hey there, Zozo, don't blame yourself for what happened. You'll get Laharl back. You really think so, Crimson Phantom? Of course I do, and once you do, you won't have to worry, because I've given your base some sweet defenses. He wasn't kidding. The Crimson Phantom had made a wall around the base, which had a curse on it so it wouldn't allow any of my enemies to pass through. From day 75 to day 78, I learned more about the perimeter wall, like how it would only let people that I trusted into the base. The Mermex Queen was definitely someone I knew I could trust. The perimeter wall let her right through. Greetings, your queenliness. Zozo, there is one more thing I didn't tell you about the Killer Rabbit, but I'm going to tell you what that is now. What is it, Mermex Queen? Your friend, Laharl, he kept this secret from you because he wanted to protect you. The truth is that the curses of the Crimson Phantom can be reversed by the feathers of a live hippogriff. You mean that now the Killer Rabbit can... Reverse the curse and reclaim his ultimate weapon, yes! You must go and rescue Laharl before the Killer Rabbit extracts his feathers. I will. I think I know now where in the meadow his base is. The Mermex Queen gave me some javelins to serve as a ranged weapon and wished me luck as I departed. From day 79 to day 84, I searched for the Killer Rabbit's base in the meadow. I knew that it had to be somewhere around where I had found that fateful carrot patch. Sure enough, Oopsie Daisy the Warden Dragon was wandering around in plain view of that area. He had taken Laharl captive earlier, and now he was going to tell me where he was. Hey you, give me back my friend. Oops, you aren't supposed to find me. Well now I have, and I'm gonna scorch you. I rained fireballs and javelins down on him from a distance, but it still wasn't enough. And his sonic blast still hurt quite a bit. Uh -oh. What was I worried about? <laughs> it's not like you could defeat me even if I accidentally let you. I was beginning to think I was done for, and then Laharl swooped down from above and attacked the Warden Dragon while his sonic blasts were focused on me. Oh no, I should have seen that coming, but I accidentally did not. Laharl's attacks did enough damage to bring the Warden Dragon down and defeat him for good. After the Warden Dragon was defeated, I approached Laharl. Laharl, you're free. I sure am, Zozo. That Warden Dragon accidentally let me go before we even got to the lair of the Killer Rabbit. I've just been down here in the meadow, trying not to get caught again. At any rate, I'm glad you managed to get away. I was worried about you. I found something else while I was down here. A golden apple that is said to imbue the one who eats it with true strength, as long as they are pure of heart. It's yours now, Zozo. Gee, thanks! I'm starving! I ate the golden apple and could feel myself transform. I must have been pure of heart because I grew into a supersized fire rabbit and had a grand total of 60 hearts. My jump was given a big boost too, allowing me to reach higher heights than ever before. From day 85 to day 89, Laharl and I went back to the base where things were once again becoming super ultra serious all of a sudden. Zozo, it is time. I'm gonna take you back to the eroded badlands so we can get that battle axe. But how are we going to bypass the curse? Oh wait, aren't your feathers the way to do it? Yes, my feathers can make a magic key that will let you get through. I held off on telling you until I was sure that you were pure of heart. But now that I know you are and that you won't become another killer rabbit once you get the battle axe, I can give you the key. Laharl gave me a bunch of his hippogriff feathers and I crafted them into a key. Use the key at the ruin, it'll be like I am with you. I did as my good friend Laharl said and traveled back to the cursed ruins in the eroded badlands. With the magic key, I was able to bypass the curse and enter the ruins. Inside, I found the battle axe lying in wait for me to claim it. I'm gonna put the magic key that Laharl made away. It'd be pretty silly if I accidentally reversed the curse and made it so that the killer rabbit could use the killer axe.
After I had safely stowed the key, I took the secret rare battle axe from its place and left the ruins. From day 90 to day 94, I stepped out of the ruins and found the killer rabbit standing out there to confront me in the eroded badlands. How do you do, fellow rabbit? It's over, KR. I have the battle axe now, and you'll never break the curse on it. That's the thing about you, Zozo. You always think you understand everything. That's why it's so easy to trick you. Nuh-uh. This time I do understand everything. I understand that you are a ruthless monster who must be stopped before he hurts anyone else. But think of what we could accomplish if you joined me. Nobody would disrespect us bunnies anymore. We would be the top of the woods. I'll never join you, killer rabbit. Suit yourself. By the way, I accidentally picked up some feathers that your hippogriff friend Laharl dropped down in the meadow. That's not good. The killer rabbit leaped forth and wrestled with me for the axe. I was a strong rabbit, but he was still stronger. And before I could stop him, he reversed the curse on the axe and took it back. No, you tricked me. I thought I understood, but I didn't. You're too naive. Now wallow here in this sand pit. He jumped on the sand I was sitting on, and the impact of his landing made the sand collapse, so I fell into a deep hole. From day 95 to day 97, I used my boosted jumps to slowly but surely make my way back up to the surface of the eroded badlands. There was no time to lose. Now that the killer rabbit had the super secret rare killer battle axe, he was going to go on his biggest spree of attacks yet. And I know who he's gonna go after first. I rushed back to the Sika woods and entered the hive of the Mermex Queen. Her soldiers were destroyed, and that wasn't even the worst part. In her throne room, the Mermex Queen was dying after having just been attacked by the killer rabbit and his killer axe. No, your queenliness! Zozo, so you made it. I'm so sorry. I tried to stop him, but he tricked me once again. And now he's wiped out your entire hive. Do not worry. As long as there is a Mermex Queen, the hive will be able to replenish itself. What you must do now is get the battle axe away from him at all costs. I'll do it. Even if I have to risk everything, I will do it. In a few days, my final egg will hatch and become the new queen. You need to protect her for me. I will. I will, your queenliness. She passed on, leaving me behind in the world that I must save. On day 98, I returned to my base in the Ebony Woods and found that the perimeter wall and the rest of the base was destroyed. Laharl was there, but nobody else had survived the attack. He came for the Crimson Phantom Sozo to make sure that he was never cursed again. Now the battle axe is his forever. Don't say that, Laharl. I know that you and I get serious sometimes, but we always keep on trying to make things better. The only reason he left me alive is in case anyone else cursed the axe so that I could reverse it. So that killer rabbit only spared you for his own reasons. That makes me so mad. He'll probably fool you again if you give in to your emotions. Well, my emotions are pure right now. And every spark of fire in my being demands justice. Then what the heck? Go get that battle axe. You're strong enough now. I can feel it. Laharl cheered me on as I marched off through the woods. On day 99, I arrived in the meadow with a burning passion in my heart. I was ready to take down that killer rabbit with all my strength and all of my fire. Once I was inside his base, I came face to face with my nemesis once more. You never learn, do you, Zozo? Like fire, you think you're bright, but when it rains, you go out. The only rain I see now is your reign of terror, and it ends here. A clever use of two words that sound alike, but you've forgotten already that I have the killer axe. Actually, it is you who has forgotten. That battle axe was accidentally forged to be evil, but it was touched by a hero who was pure of heart. I jumped at him, and once more, we wrestled with the axe. This time, I managed to get it away from him and ran out of his base. The secret to the battle axe that I was finally able to understand was that it was cursed twice. Once I was back home, I used some more of Laharl's feathers I found in his base to undo the first curse that happened when it was made, turning it into a weapon of pure goodness and justice. Now, no evildoer could ever wield it. Only I could wield the battle axe. On day 100, I returned to the meadow with the new and improved super justified hero axe and faced off against the killer rabbit. Why did you come back? I might have let you live for a while. I had to. There is a whole world out there that needs to be protected from rotten rabbits like you. There is a young Mermex Queen who will hatch today. There is a Hippogriff who is my best friend. For them, for everyone, my fires of good will burn out your evil. 
The killer rabbit hopped at me, but with the battle axe in my hand, my attacks were strong enough to take his hearts away. Curse you, Zozo! Haven't you got it yet? I can't be cursed. I blasted him with fireball after fireball, and then swung the battle axe down on him, ending the fight! There is a new rabbit in this land, and he's a protector rabbit.